Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another Platinum Guide, this one is for Tymesia. We're getting Platinum here in about just just over 3 hours, I think it ends up about 3 hours and 3 minutes when I look at my timer at the end of the, at the end of the, you know once Platinum's popped and I check the time on my save file, about 3 hours 3 minutes, so it would take you a bit longer. The game can be quite difficult at times but we're going to be rocking a build where we can basically just spam parry. But it's, it takes probably 30 minutes to an hour to get to that build. And we'll also be using a glitch, guys, to level up to level 50 really quickly. Pretty much within the first hour, we're going to be max level and have our max build ready to rock. So it's a Dark Souls type game. No difficulty option, so all the same difficulty. And we're going to have to jump straight into this one, guys. Pretty quick. There's a lot to advise here. And if you look in the description, there's a full guide of everything I'm going to be showing you here. Full, complete guide. So this is your first collectible, that's collectible number 37. This comes up piece of paper, it's not a collectible but I pick it up because you get a collection of memories. Every collectible you pick up either gives you a consumable called collection of memories and um, same with the story law. So yeah, second collectible is in here. This is number 50, paper on the ground 01. You need to smash any barrels you see, any barrels you see smash them guys because there's a trophy for smashing 1000 barrels. Yeah, this guy, you need to kill the guy on the left. So kill him quickly. And once you've kill, killed him, you'll get the key to the plaza. And then you can open this gate. Like I say, it might be a bit tricky to begin with, guys. But once you get this build rocking, like I say, about 30 minutes to an hour into the video, it'll become a lot easier. Um, around this corner, you got collectible number 53 and anonymous soldier's diary, 01. And you've got your first beacon over here. Remember guys, whenever you pick up a collectible, you always get a consumable along with it called Collection of Memories and save them because we'll be using them at very specific times. They're pretty much your best way to level up early game because killing the enemies don't actually give you many shards. And now we're going to kill this guy. You might have a bit of trouble with this guy, uh, but if you hold R2, what you do when you hold R2 is you weave an enemy and you take this sort of special weapon. And you see in the bottom right hand corner, it's on a cooldown at the moment. Normally when you fuse one, it goes onto like a cooldown. Each plague weapon is different. You'll see as we go through, guys. So like I said, this first bit is probably the most difficult. Just go by the tutorials. And the boss at the end of this tutorial, he's the only missable trophy. A lot of guides say, well, I think almost every other guide, they say that the tutorial collectibles are missable. But they are not. All these collectibles we are getting now, and once you kill them, guys, you'll get a key to the cemetery. And once killed him, I just come back to the beacon to rest to get all my um, health back and to restock my potions. Yeah, none of collectibles in the tutorial are missable. You can get them all in Hermes Fortress Sub Quest 1. All that's missable in this one, guys, is the boss at the end of it. You have to kill him. You have to basically take off his first helper. There's another collectible, guys. That is number 51, Residence Diary. These numbers I'm giving you, like number 51 or number 52, for example, if you go in your collectible list, that's a number in there. So from the top to the bottom, top one would be number one, next one number two, and obviously 52 is number 52 on the list. Here is number 52, paper on the ground, O2. And that's all your collectibles, guys, in the tutorial. Like I say, you can get these later, but I get them now because we want the collection of memories that you get with them. And like I say, them collection of memories, once you use one, they give you 100 memory shards, and we use them for leveling up early game. And um, the story collectibles, they give you a collection of memories level two. They actually give you 500 shards, but it's only 22 of them. Alright, so this guy, yep, you have to kill this guy without dying, guys. And you literally die in like two hits. And there's, there is no way to make this easier, because there's no new game plus at the moment. If they do introduce one in the future, then it's possible. If you can still enter tutorial on new game plus, you can come and beat him on um, new game plus really easily. But for now, without no new game plus, guys, maybe they never will be. you got to beat him this way. I say, if he hits you twice, you're pretty much dead. And his, his lunge attack, he does like a massive lunge, like a thrust. That'll take off like 80% 8, 8 of your health or so. So you need to make sure your health is like full, just in case that hits you. But you see what I'm doing? A lot of guys will actually parry this guy. But to parry this guy, you're just getting too close and it makes things a lot tricky. The way I'm doing this, you see his green, you see the green bit of his health. Once you damage him with R1, it, re it reveals that sort of green bit of health, that's like the wounds. They sort of, they sort of have like a double health bar if you, in a way. Because you have to damage them with Sabre. 
to um, knock off the white bar, then you have to use your claw with R2 to knock off the green bar. Um, but if you don't knock off the green bar quick enough, the white bar will heal past the green bar. So it's all about you know keeping the pressure on so they don't get a chance to heal. And if you press L2, you'll lob a feather. And sometimes I use that to stop them from healing when they're about to heal. You know when they're about to heal because their health bar will be flashing green. Yeah, if you're wondering why this health bar is flashing green at times, it's not because he's about to do an attack, a counter attack, or a critical attack. It's because his health is about to heal. So what I do, if I think I'm not going to be able to attack him anytime soon, and I see his bar flashing green, I lob a feather just to reset the healing process. Because it'll take about three seconds for them to heal, you know, once you've last hit them. And how I'm doing it. So, um, I say a lot of guys want to use parry. All I'm doing, I'm just keep running away, make sure you keep your distance, and you want to keep trying to run to the left. You see, I'm mostly running to the left. Sometimes I do run to the right. But you see that attack you just did? That has more of a hitbox to the right. So if you're running right, but you're not quite out of range of his thrust, it can catch you. But if you're running to the left, and you're sort of in range of it, you can avoid it, because uh, it's got a smaller hitbox on the left than what it has on the right. So you always want to be running to the left, guys. And what I try to do, when he does that jumping attack, that's when I try to hit him. So I try to bait the jumping attack, and you always want to do either two saber attacks or one claw attack. Don't try to do any more. And, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So only attack when he does a jump. We can also... If he just run in, if he runs at you with his sword behind him and he makes a grunting noise like this, no, that wasn't it. You know when he's about to dodge, because most of the time he'll jump back. Not always, but he'll sort of sidestep to the back or to the left, and that indicates he's about to jump. But sometimes he'll just jump without doing that. Like I saw then, he just hopped back and then he jumped again. Or well, sometimes he'll do a lunge, but most of the time he will jump. Like I say, sometimes he'll he'll run at you with his sword behind him. And if he makes a grunting noise when he's about to run, that means he's going to have a massive cooldown after it. Like, he didn't grunt then. He did a, he did a charge, but he didn't grunt. I tried to point out when he does it again. But yeah, that's all it is, guys. Just keep baiting this jump and go for two saber attacks and then a claw attack. But there is, you see that one? Did you hear that little grunt when he ran? That means he's doing that attack and he's going to have a more of a recovery. So you can normally attack him after that charge... Remember, only the charge where he grunts or, of course, his jumping attack. They're the only two I attack him on. You'll find you can... It looks like there are windows to attack him after other attacks that he does. But sometimes he will recover very, very quickly on other attacks. Not a lot, but sometimes he will. And it's that one time he recovers quickly, which will catch you out and kill you. Because you can do three hit combos, and if everyone hits you, you're dead. So yeah, just best to go for the jumping attacks, guys, or his charge, where he makes a grunting noise. See, he's running at me then, but there's no grunting noise, so I know he's going to do the combo. It's quite slow going, but it's the safest way, I find. There you go, he's grunting, he's running, and he's grunting. That means I can get ready to attack him afterwards. Again, he's running and grunting. Remember, two saber attacks, or a claw attack. I normally, I normally switch between the two. And like I say, if he's going to heal in between attacks and he's got his wounds, just lob a feather with L2 to him to set his healing. That's it. Saber, saber, claw. Saber, saber, claw. Yep, that, see, if I was running to the right, that lunge would have probably hit me then. Because I was running to the left, I sort of avoided its hitbox. So that's got a massive hitbox, this thrust. Again, if I was running to the right, it would have likely hit me. And you don't have to do this first time, by the way. If you're finding this too much trouble and you want to get to grips with the game's combat first, then you can do so. You can come back and do this at any time. It's in the tutorial, guys. It takes, what, five minutes to get here? So you can pretty much do this any time. Just start a new game on another save slot. And just sprint back here and just try your best. You do actually fight him in the main game. So you can actually practice him in the main game if you want. I'll be sure to point it, point it out to you. It's not until about two hours in uh, when you fight him though. Probably about two hours and ten minutes into the guide when you fight him. 
but you can practice them there you want but the thing is within there there's a smaller arena so you don't quite have a space to um, run around and avoid him this is a massive arena this one luckily so you can actually do this sort of um, just running away to avoid him you can't do it in the fight in the main story the thing is in the main story one you're already o overpowered from your build and your level anyway so it's, it's so much easier in the main story it's just here because you're basically level one Problem is, if you if you die to him, the game literally saves straight after. So unless unless you quit the fight before fighting him, and backed up your save, you can't you can't even quickly quit and retry him quickly. You always have to run straight back to him from the start of the tutorial. Like I say, unless you backed up your save um, just before you entered this arena. Almost got him. And um, don't try to get cocky when he's got not much health left. I've tried it a lot of times. He's, he's literally had just a tiny bit of health left. And I've got cocky and just ran in there after an attack, which I wouldn't normally attack him after. Thinking I could just get a few more hits in and finish him off. And then he's done a combo and comboed me to death. So just keep the strategy up even until right at the end, guys. Until he's dead. You don't actually kill him. All you do, you take off his first part of health. You see his health bar on the top. You see them two little dots on the right. That's how many, how many health bars he's got. So once you, normally on a boss with two, you take off his first health bar and then they get a second health bar straight after. So yeah, for this trophy, you just got to take off his first health bar. And um, on this health bar, you see it's got a border around it. You see on the far left and the far right of the actual bar, it's got sort of two arrows pointing left and to the right. But they indicate, I mean, he's a boss. But on normal enemies, if they've got them two triangles on either side of the bar, that means a, a elite enemy type. Uh, just make you aware of that while we're here. Yeah, so um, any normal enemies with just a, with a border around the health bar, them two arrows on the end, that means a, a elite enemy. And that's trophy gate, guys. You shall not pass. That's it. That's all you got to do. Take off his first health bar, and then you'll automatically die. Unfortunately, you don't get nothing from beating him. If you did, it could have been helpful doing this first time, but you get, you don't get anything from doing him. Not like in your your normal Dark Souls games where you beat the tutorial boss and you get like a massive bonus to your like your currency or you get some cool equipment. You get nothing at all from beating him except for the trophy. So I talked to her guys. Come in here, get that collectible. That's collectible number 92. You got this one here, collectible number 91, Ace Miss Journal. Over here, you've got collectible number 94, Ancient Words by the Gate. And over here, you've got collectible number 93, Edward the Blessed Notes. Yeah, like I say, guys, it might be a bit tricky to begin with, but um, yeah, you want to come over here and you want to warp to the Sea of Trees. You can either talk to Ace and me, she'll warp you here, or you can interact with that little map on that uh, table. Yeah, it'll be, it might be a bit tricky to begin with, guys, but like I say, once we get our build going, probably about 30 minutes to an hour into the video, it'll become much easier. Okay, some more barrels. Remember, any barrels you see, you need to break them. So this is your first beacon. Yeah, so just follow my lead. Any enemies I kill, it's because we need to. So up here, you want to grab this collectible. This is number two. Collectible number two, Tattered Twilight Circus Recruitment Ad. Smash these barrels and around the corner. You got collectible number seven, village elders manuscript 01, and then get to that ladder. No need to kill any of these. Remember, the, these, these numbers I'm giving you on the collectibles, they're the order uh, of where they normally are in the list. So if I'm saying collectible number 38, that's because in the list it's actually number 38. If though the collectibles don't actually have numbers on them. So smash these barrels, and you see this guy with the shield and the axe. You want to kill him, um, but when you're fighting him, yeah, kill him. He's actually a Hellbird enemy. But these guys are the only guys who can drop Oregano. And we need that for a trophy. So kill him and loot anything he drops. And there, guys, is collectible number 01. Uh, Twilight Circus poster. Yeah, so kill any guys you see with an axe and a shield. You need to kill them. They are the Hellbird enemies. Uh, sorry, not Hellbird. Hand axe. And there is um, collectible 05. Note from an unknown hopeless 01. And beyond the barrels, guys, it's another collection of memories. Make sure you're picking up everything that I'm collecting. 
If you ever find out, if you ever find I level up somewhere and you can't, you can just go and kill a few nearby enemies and uh, just get a few more shards. There's no need to do things fast like I am. I'm obviously doing it to just to keep this guide nice and quick. So once back up here, we're just going to come, come up here and we're going to kill this knife lady. She is a mutated knife enemy. You notice she's got all these sort of um, roots coming out of the back. Yes, a killer. There you go, and grab anything she drops. We're killing her because she drops rosemary. We're going to drop. It. We're going to kill any of them mutated knife women we see, and also the mutated hand axe enemies. Those guys with the shield. Yeah, down here next. And you've got another collectible. This is number ten. Trees blessed manuscript. And now unlock the shortcut gate and come to the beacon. Well, I'm going to level up now, guys. So go into your general items and use. You should have 16 collection of memories level 1. If you don't have 16, then you miss one. It doesn't matter if you don't. Collection of memories are not really needed for anything. I'll just use them to get shards. Each one gives you 100. But if you find out you don't have enough, just go and kill some nearby enemies. And you want to level up to level 5 and raise plague. You want plague level 5. And then you want to unlock the talent deflect level 2. And Re reckless deflect level 2. And then unlock talent claw and short claw. Now with reckless deflect level two, you can pretty much just spam L1 in front of enemies, and you'll 90% of the time parry them. And short claw just makes it so your claw attack is much quicker. I like it. Yeah, if you hold R2 on enemies, you can normally make them drop a additional shard. It only happens once per enemy. Um. Per of that current one through the map through a level yeah normally you hold R2 and you see he dropped something then when I did a when you do a charge claw attack by the way that's called a predator claw so if I hold R2 that would be a predator claw that's like a charge claw attack and it also weaves a weapon and it also gives him a chance dropping an additional shard like he did yeah with short claw normally you can just spam R2 quickly so you killed him again he, he respawned after resting at the beacon. That's another hand axe enemy. Now we're going to kill this woman again. Again, I just used R2 on her to um, get an extra item. And then I'm going to finish her off, grab anything she drops. So once you killed her, next thing we're going to get, guys, is this note around here. Number 13. Notes on Hermes Live, Sea of Trees 01. Some more barrels to break. Remember, grab any barrel, smash any barrels you see. Yep, here we've got collectible three, Twilight Circus Recruitment Ad, more breakables. Quickly smash this cyst, quickly. You've got a collection of memories behind that barrel. I think we actually got another one just before and as well. Another collection of memories, so I didn't mention it. Yeah, then come up here, unlock this gate. Here's another hand axe enemy, guys, a mutated version. We're going to kill him. You can use your predator claws first to um, get an extra item. Sometimes it, it's a little bit random. I mean, you won't always get a item. And like I say, it's only one item per enemy per run of that level. Yeah, sometimes it just won't appear. Like I say, it's a bit random. I think it's probably like a 30% chance. You're just very unlucky sometimes. But there you see, he finally dropped it. And I finished him off. Like I say, we're trying to get Oregano from this guy. And the mutated knife lady, we're trying to get Rosemary from her. There's only two herbs in the game which you have to farm for. Oregano and um, Rosemary. Don't worry, I'm going to show you a good farming spot for each of these. All I'm doing is I'm killing any of them enemies we encounter along the way. So you've got another cyst over here, guys, to destroy. Yeah, they climb up here and you've got another cyst. And you've got a collectible. This will be collectible number 8, Village Elders Manuscript, 02. Yeah, so when you parry now, you can pretty much just spam L1, guys, with no timing involved. Just spam it, and it'll pretty much work, like I say, 90% of the time. That is the beginning of our sort of easy overpowered build. Right, so up here, just going to rest at the beacon for a save point, and you're going to try and kill this enemy. Some more barrels to break along the way. This guy hits you very hard, but you'll find out now just how 
Easy it is with your um, parry by just spamming L1. What you always want to do with this guy, you want to use Predator's Claw. So make sure, first of all, you use Charge Attack on him. You want to make sure, make sure he drops an additional shard. So use your Charge Claw Attack until he drops an additional shard. Otherwise, you might not get enough from him to um, unlock that weapon, that Plague Weapon. Yes, yeah, so a trophy for unlocking every Plague Weapon. Yeah, and if you see if you see the burst of green light above the head, that means about to do a critical attack. At the moment, the only way to dodge a critical attack is to lob a feather or to actually dodge away from it. You see it then? The green aura around him, the flashes. That means critical is coming. There you go, he just dropped, you see, he just dropped an item. That's it. That only happens, like I say, once per enemy. And this guy is a elite version. You see his health bar, like I said, with the boss earlier. He's got two triangles, uh, sorry, two arrows on either side of the bar. That means he's a elite enemy type. And these guys always drop a alchemy enhancer, which is used for upgrading potions. And I think they have high drop rates of everything. And then, well, of the items they can drop anyway. And these guys only drop once. Um, they only spawn once per run of that map. To spawn them again, you have to go back to the hub and then come back. Yeah, so once you killed him, you should get um, you should get key to the side of the tent, alchemy enhancer, and hammer skill shards. He should he should have dropped at least two, and we actually grabbed one from him as well. And then what you want to do now, guys, is use memory shards times 500. Uh, sorry, use your collection of memories times five to get shards times 500, and then level up to level seven. And you want to put it into Plague 7. Plague 7. And now we're going to unlock the talent. We're going to go into Dodge. Unlock Step and Jump. And also Short Dodge. So Step and Jump. And Short Dodge, guys. And then we want to unlock the Plague Weapon Hammer. You should have enough to do that. There you go. Yeah, so just unlock Hammer. I didn't unlock the others just because there might be a chance you've had bad RNG and you don't actually have enough yet. So just, just see Hammer for now. And then you want to come up here. And around this corner here, you've got collectible number 11. Notes on Hermes Life Circus 01. Around here, you have another collectible. This is collectible 4, market announcement. And then climb up this ladder. Like I say, if you look in the description, guys, there's going to be a text guide linked. And it's got, ba it's got everything listed that we're doing so all these collectibles everything is there so if you ever miss something I've said or or you did miss something you didn't realize until later and you want to know where it is I know it's no probably no timestamps yep and then you want to drop down here guys and down here will be collectible number 15 note from a royal guard yep once you've got that just climb back up yeah but so anything you miss guys or you just want to check look in the text look in the text guide and like I say literally everything it's listed there. So you can just use that for reference if you need to. I did think I did want to pause on this collectible, but you can't because when you pick up a collectible, um, enemies can still attack you. So I literally have to pick one up quickly and then move on. Yeah, get a shortcut ladder. Not that down. Yep, and then climb up here. Yeah, grab that collection of memories. Come over here and quickly destroy this cyst. If that yellow bar gets full, it'll kill you really quickly. Around this corner is a collection of memories. Come off the edge here. Now there's no more poison around. You can drop down over here. Yep, smash through these barrels. Yep, and you'll find a fennel. Yeah, you've got another collectible here, guys. Yeah, this is Nose on Hermes Life, um, Sea of Trees level um, 02. Yeah, and that was collectible 14. Yeah, collectible 14, Notes on Hermes Life, Sea of Trees 02. And then come back up here. There'll be a collection of memories around the corner here. Ignore this guy here. He's a elite halberd enemy. We're going to kill him a bit later. Yeah, grab a collection of memories. Come around here. And you want to quickly kill this mutated knife enemy. Quickly kill her, guys. You can use a predator claw on her. Just get an extra item. But you need to be quick because that elite halberd enemy is coming straight for you. Quickly kill her. There you go. Hopefully she'll drop a rosemary. 
No. And then come over here, guys. More barrels. Drop down here. And then down here, you want to kill this hand axe enemy. Yeah, try to um, use a charge attack on him if you can. Charge attack slash predator claw, they're the same thing. Yeah, to get him to drop an, an extra item. When you use your predator claw on them, they always they won't drop anything else. All they drop is a shard. It just makes you get an extra shard from them. It's, it's not an extra way to get, you know, a herb or, or something else. It's just an extra shard that they may drop. That's it, kill that hand axe enemy. That's it, grab anything they drop. If you're lucky, you've got an oregano already. That's it, grab that collection of memories and then drop down here. Yeah, around this corner, guys, you'll have collectible number six. Note from an unknown hopeless, O2. Yep, and up here, along this path, you've got collectible number nine. Village Elders Manuscript, O3. Leave that guy for a moment, we're going to come back and kill him later. Some barrels here to break. Yeah, I I didn't want to kill him now, just in case he's got no potions like I haven't. Yeah, grab that collection of memories. And come this ladder, and here's your third beacon, guys. So this is just before the boss fight. Uh, but around this corner, you've got a collection of memories, level 1. The only way to get collection of memories level 2 is from getting um, lore collectibles. Yes, yeah, more barrels and beacon number 3. Alright guys, so you've got a safe point there. We're going to unlock this shortcut gate. Every time you respawn that beacon, get the barrels near it. Come up here, and now we're going to kill this halberd elite. Like I say, this is an elite enemy, so it's going to be quite difficult to kill. Just remember to spam parry with L1 and use your plague weapons. Yeah, you can try to choose a charge attack on him, get him to drop an extra item. There you go, an extra shard. There's a lot of these in the game. You don't have to kill all the elite enemies. I mean, I don't kill every single one. I just kill enough. Because uh, sometimes they drop a key. Or, you know, so sometimes you have to kill them. Uh, but sometimes I kill him just for the alchemy in hand. So, I mean, he drops a key, uh, but I don't use that key anyway. So once you killed him, just come back down to the beacon, guys, to recover your potions. That's it. Get the barrels again, because we uh, reset them all. That's it. Grab the barrels. Get back up, ladder. He won't respawn now. Like I said, the elite enemies don't respawn until you go back to the hub and then come back. But normal enemies do. So we're going to kill this mutated knife woman again. This is pretty much the lady we, we farm for the rosemary. Yeah, but remember, once you can only use Predator's Claw on them once. Once you've got that item from them, from using Charge Attack, you cannot get that again until you go back to the hub and come back. So dropping down here, we're killing this um, mutated Hand Axe enemy again. I say mutated because he's got the roots coming out of his back. Uh, but you see that knife lady there? She's just a normal variant. She don't have roots. She's not mutated. It's a mutated type which can drop the um, herbs. So once you killed him, I drop down and now I kill this hammer guy. This is guy, he's not an elite enemy. Um, but we want to kill him for the hammer. The hammer shards. So you want to use a charge sack on him first to make him drop a additional shard. And now with step and jump, by the way, the step and jump talent. Now when someone's going to do a critical attack, just dodge towards them. Yeah, so instead of trying to get the right time in a prison L2, with step and jump, all you can do is just keep dodging towards him and you jump over them, guys. Yeah, so there, dodge towards him. That's it, you jump over him. Yeah, when he does, this guy, when he does see four, he does like a four hand combo of like a ground pound, he always does a critical at the end of the four combo. But pretty much got him. There we go. Just make sure you do grab the extra shard from him by using the Predator's Claw. That's it, grab anything he drops. We got mint there. We actually need mint in our key in our um, in our crafting process to get over power quickly. But I'm going to show you where to find a fixed spot of mint anyway. 
getting it from him is a bit random so I don't actually do the glitch until we get to the fixed spot later just in case, just in case anybody's had really bad luck so what we're going to do now guys we're going to use all our collection of memories you should have 12, 12 of them that'll give you 1200 and I'm going to level up to level 9 and put that into plague so level 9 and plague 9 there you go like I say if, you, if you're short on any just go and kill that woman a, a bit more that mutated knife woman if you're a bit short she's the best woman to farm because we need rosemary from her anyway at the moment but as long as you've been following me you should be where I am with that and now we're going to unlock strategies we're going to go into talent strategies look level 1 and look level 2 there you go as you can see increases the item drop rate that's it now we're good to go and kill another elite enemy this will be a flying dagger woman so come up this path I'm going to get his collectible first this is collectible number 12 notes on Hermes life circus O2 right yep so flying dagger woman yep she's an elite uh, you want to try to um, use Predator's Claw on her to begin with to try and pull off that extra item. There you go, got it already. So now I can just parry her. This woman, she can do quite long combos at times. So um, when she's attacking you, keep pressing L1 until you're sure she stopped her combo. Yeah, a combo can, she can do like a 5 attack combo or something like that. And sometimes she'll throw daggers afterwards as well, flying daggers. This name I'm giving enemies, by the way, it's it's the plague weapon that they drop. So if I say flying daggers, woman, that means she drops flying daggers shards or, for example, a blood sword enemy, they drop blood sword shards. Hand axe enemy, they drop hand axe shards, shards, and so on. Yep. So once you finish her off, you'll always get elite enemies will always drop a alchemy enhancer, and the amount of shards they drop is random, and also it's random if they drop a herb or not. Yeah, but once you kill that, you always get an alchemy enhancer, by the way, from elite enemies. Bosses, it's a bit random. Bosses will either drop an alchemy enhancer or they won't. It's random with them. Same with the herbs. But you always get a certain amount of shards. Yeah, so what we've done now, guys, we've gone into... We've leveled up one more time to level 10. And we've put into Plague 10. And we're going to unlock strategies. Um, look level 3 as well. Yeah, so look level 3 guys, and I un just unlocked all the plague weapons, we unlocked hand axe, knife, halberd, fist, and flying daggers. Yep, and now for the farm. So, we need to keep killing this woman for rosemary. Yeah, this is the only place, as far as I know, I've not had it dropped from anybody else. I've platinum this game now about 6 times, and this is the only way I've got rosemary. So all you do, you kill her. Pick up anything she drops and then use a bloodstained dagger in your inventory to kill yourself. And then just repeat that guys. Keep running up to her. Like I say, what you're looking for is Rosemary. Each time you respawn, smash them barrels next to you and the barrels through this gate. That's it. Then straight up the ladder. Straight over to her. Kill her. Loot her. And grab and use bloodstained dagger. Just make sure before you use bloodstained dagger, you get your shards back which you dropped. You see that sort of green outline? That's where you died previously. Just interact with that to get all your shards back. You'll know when they drop some after killing them because there'll be that sort of trinkle noise. And then I got it, Rosemary. I was quite lucky there. Literally about two kills. I was thinking how much am I going to edit it out. So I was going to show you it a few times and then edit out the farming. But I was quite lucky. I got it after like on that one. That's what like my third or fourth kill. But yeah, once you got Rosemary, that's all you want, guys. Yeah, Rosemary. And what I'm doing now, ready for the boss. All I did, I went to my talents. I unequipped um, Look Level 3. And I equipped the talent. I went into Claw. Short Claw Level 2. Yeah, so I unequipped um, Look Level 3. And equipped Short Claw Level 2. Just because it gives you like healing effect. Yeah, so this is guy. I there's a quick edit there, guys, because I did die in ones, and as you see, when you die for the first time, you get a trophy for dying. Called memory interrupted. Die for the first time. But yeah, this is it. All I'm doing is I'm gonna, just gonna keep powering him. As you can see, he's got two health bars. And um, at this point in the game, it might seem a little bit difficult. 
But this is the easiest way I've found to make him. Just parry, just spam parry. Because he's spamming, like I say, it's successful 90% of the time. So um, it might take you a few tries, just depends how, you know, lucky you are. But with some attacks, sometimes you just spam it, it doesn't quite work as well. You know, sometimes to be more successful, you need to actually, you need to pause for a moment before you press parry again. Uh, but if you just want to, if you don't want to learn his moves too much, just spam parry and you should eventually win against him. But eventually, once you damage him so much, he will sort of change from ranged attacks to um, close attacks and vice versa. And when he changes to ranged attacks, you want to keep chasing him down, keep on the pressure. Uh, because once he once he um, dashes away, you can actually knock him out of doing the ranged attack. You can parry the ranged attack as well. You can, page, you can parry every single attack, as long as it's not a critical. When it's crit critical, remember, you want to dodge towards him to dodge over it. And when you see him do a red attack, his ultimate attack, you need to dodge to the side. I find that easier. You can dodge out of range, but if you're already close to him, you won't get away in time. And you just want to dodge to the side. Yeah, so I'm just spamming parry. That's all I'm pretty much doing. Yeah, don't forget about your play weapon. You know when he's about to dodge away and start doing ranged attacks, because he'll, he'll start walking backwards and he'll get ready to teleport. Yeah, so just alternate between saber attacks and claw attacks. A lot of time, good thing about deflect is it actually damages him as well. So it's ultimate attack, yeah, dodge to the side. Dodge to the side of him when he's doing that. Yeah, deflecting does quite a lot of damage, so it works quite well. I think I actually get very close. I think I've got just a tiny bit of HP left when I beat him. What's up, this boss? I know, where this guy? And that's it, guys. So, yeah, so once you beat him... Now, before we get to the next boss, we're going to be overpowered. So, um, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, so he'll drop that. He might drop an alchemy enhancer. That is random. We get a trophy from beating him. You get um, Miasma Skill Shards, you get Forgotten Feather and Odus Core. Forgotten Feathers, what they do, they let you reset all your actual level points. You can reset your talent points um, unlimited amount of times by just going into your talent menu and pressing the buttons prompted at the bottom of the screen. Or you can just press X on the, the talent, I think, to reset it. Um, but once you get back here, guys, you get the Long Lasting Potion. You want to come in here first. And you want to get this transformation experiment report. That is law collectible. Um, yeah, that's a law collectible, guys, you want to get. And then come over to Ace Me. You want to show her the items. You want to show her Odus Vile Core and Transformation Experiment Report 01. And then that will get you Law 7 of 22, Odus Vile Core, and number 1 of 22, Transformation Experiment Report. And now what we're going to do, we're going to use all our memory shards. And um, sorry, all our collection of memories, you should have 12 level 1s and 2 level 2s. That should give you like 1200 altogether. 1200 shards. Sorry, yeah, no, we've got two. So we've got two level 2s and two level 1s. Yeah, and after that, we're going to level up to level 12. We're going to go to strength level 3. Yeah, I normally get plague to 10 first, and then I'll get strength to 10. Yeah, now we're going to unlock the talent strategies. We're going to get Look Level 3 again. So Look Level 3 and Plague Runes Level 2. And we want to equip the Long Lasting Potion. Yeah, Long Lasting Potion. You want to equip this. Yeah, so equip the Long Lasting Potion. And you want to upgrade the potion. And you want to upgrade the ingredient slots Level 3. Very important. And then what you can do then, go into Craft Potion and put any healing items inside the slots. Do not upgrade anything else. We want to upgrade the ingredient slots. Very, very important because that's part of the glitch to get overpowered. Yep, so long lasting potion, make sure you do equip it. And it's the ingredient slots level three you want to unlock. And like I say, put a healing, po uh, healing herb in each of the crafting slots. And then you want to go guys to Sea of Trees subquest two. Yeah, make sure it's subquest two that you come to. Very important. Right, once you're here, I'm gonna quickly get this collectible. That's collectible number 24, Legend of Four Thieves Vinegar 02. 
You might die trying to get that. If you do, don't worry about it. Just grab it, die on your way back, and then recover your shards afterwards. You'll grab that collection of memories, level one. You might need to just, just um, dodge that guy so you get up the ladder. Otherwise, he, he, always done, he always attacks you when you first come across him. And um, he might knock you down the ladder. So let him attack first and then climb. Yep, now this guy, we're going to kill him. He's a Halberd Elite. We need to kill him for his Alchemy Enhancer. That's only the reason we're killing him for. At this point, you've probably got a Plague Weapon, Halberd. Yeah, but one is Alchemy Enhancer. Yeah, so um, we're doing this level, Subquest 2, and the next one will be going into the Royal Royal Garden, and that's where we go with Power Guys. We go from level 13 to level 50 in about, probably takes about 7 minutes, once we start the actual glitch. Yeah, it takes about 7 minutes to get from level 13 to level 50. So it's not too bad. Um, all we're doing at the moment, I've been trying to set you up ready for it. You might still need Oregano. You need Rosemary for the glitch, that's why I farmed Rosemary to begin with. But Oregano, you don't need it for anything other than the trophy. So, um, the farming spot for Oregano, if you don't get it later, it's near the end of the game. Um, grab that collection of memories there, guys. Grab this collectible. Yeah, that's um, number 18. Collectible 18, experience of a hopeless builder. 01. Yep, then come up here. Yeah, drop down here and get a shortcut gate. Smash this barrels for another collection of memories. Yep, knock down that shortcut ladder. No, not going down it yet, just knocking it down. And then make a way over here. Grab this collectible. This is collectible number 25. Tales of Folk Potions, 04. And then we'll get collectible number 22. Sea of Trees, Record of a Mysterious Event. Yeah, Dodger and me climb a ladder. And we've got another beacon around here. Second beacon. That key on the that gate on the side, you need a key for it. We will be getting that soon, don't worry. Yeah, so make a way over here along the bridge. Some more barrels to break. I do have a farming spot for the barrel trophy at the end of it, so I will show you a farming spot for that as well, don't worry. Some more barrels. I'll literally leave it right till the end to farm the barrels, and we actually do it on the way to see somebody else. Right, so this guy, this is the Great Sword Elite. You have to kill this guy because he drops a key. Uh, we, it's good as well because you've got Alchemy Enhancer at the same time. Um, but you want to um, pull, pull a shard from him just so you get an extra Great Sword shard. Yep, and then finish him off, guys. You see, a lot, of his, a lot of his attacks have sort of a slow build up. He'll sort of hold his sword out, and this is critical. Don't forget, with critical, you can just dodge towards him. Sometimes I forget, or sometimes if you're in already in an attack, your character won't recover quick enough to actually dodge. So just be careful. What I like about long lasting potion is it it heals the most out of all the potions, but it's also like a delayed effect. So um You'll get hit and then you'll keep healing. So I find that it it really helps. Because with the other potions, sometimes you waste some of the health it heals, because it, it will heal more than what you have, so you waste some of it. But with a long lasting potion, you almost never waste it. And later on, when you upgrade it, it heals loads. Um, Alright, so once you kill him, loot all the barrels. Loot anything he drops. Like I say, once you killed him, you get the um you get the key to the Sea of Trees market. You'll get Alchemy Enhancer and you should get some great sword skill shards. 
Make your way back to that recent beacon. You can rest again to get all your potions back. Yep, just rest, get all your potions back, guys. You can level up one more time if you want to level 13. If you don't have any shards here, you should have eight collection of memories shards, which you can use to get more. Uh, but you want to level, level up to level 13, strength 4, and you want to unlock the talent strategies, plague runes, level 3. Yep, there you go. And we do not do any more upgrades now, and then go into long last and potions, and upgrade another ingredient slot. Yep, upgrade that to level 4. You should be able to upgrade it now to full. Yeah, there you go. Level 4, guys. That's it. And just place another health item inside. Anything which grants more health recovery is always a bonus. And you can also unlock Plague Weapon if you want to. Halberd. I think I unlocked Halberd earlier. Time. I just got time, by the way. That time collection... That is a fixed drop, and that's the only fixed drop in the game for time. So make sure you pick that time herb, which I just did. Do not forget that, guys. We need it. And this elite enemy, that's a Qatar enemy. You're going to make sure you just use your claw attack on it once. Your charge claw attack to make a drop of shard. Grab it, and then get away. Now, collectible here, guys. Number 26, notes on Hermes Live Circus 03. Yeah, remember, make sure you use your charge claw on that woman, that Qatar enemy to get that Qatar shard which he drops and then climb it slider guys and you'll find a lore collectible that's a transformation equipment report 02 I think that's actually number 5 of 22 and then grab that collection of memories and before you come up into this poison use a long lashing potion and then quickly come up here be very very quick and quickly destroy the cyst at the top the potion should um, Avoid some of the effects when it's damaging you because you'll be healing it back, but it will eventually kill you, so you need to be very quick. Destroy the cyst, come at the top, guys, get a collection of memories. Get this collection of memories, come through this door, come to the end, drop down here, and get collect uh, collectible number 28, experience of a hopeless builder, 03. Make your way back up, you can unlock a short gate if you want, shortcut gate on your way past, but it's no not necessary. Any shortcut gates you unlock, by the way, they will save. So if you replay the map again, the shortcut gate will already be unlocked. And over here, guys, is the final collectible from this area. Number 30, Oda's Construction Notebook. And you actually need to get that collectible to finish this this um, this quest. And then Ace Me will spawn her shadow off her. You can interact with her and then quickly walk back to the hub. I know it's a very lonely hub. It's deserted. All that's there is there's only ever one NPC here, this Ace Me. Yeah, so talk to her, show item, transformation experiment report 02. You'll get, um, like I say, transformation experiment report 02, which is number 5 of 22. And you also get a collection of memories level 2. And then once you've done that, you want to warp to the Royal Garden. Yep, so Royal Garden now. Yeah, this bow enemy, you can try to get a shard from him if you want. Uh, but you like it doesn't seem to drop one or it's just really rare but you want to come up here first grab collectible number 58 notes on Hermes life garden 01 and just sprinting around here now will be very overpowered very very soon don't worry yeah up here there's a scythe enemy now these enemies we're going to try to use predator claw on everyone to get an extra shard but also kill them as well because that plague weapon heals you back up so it's one I use uh, so once you killed it come up here remember them side enemies always use predator's claw on them as well to get an extra shard up here grab a collection of memories and then barrels knock down the shortcut ladder dodge to the back here and grab collectible number 59 notes on Hermes life garden 02 Yeah, we've got another scythe enemy. So again, use your charge attack to get an extra shard. There we go. Once you got it, just kill him normally. Now, quickly come around here. Now, be very careful. It's quite easy to die here. This guy, you probably don't want to use charge attack. Just quickly kill him, grab a collectible, and move on. Yeah, probably don't use charge attack on this guy. 
you see it can get very very yeah you can get in danger there yeah grab that collectible guys that's number 61 diary of an unknown soldier O2 come down here kill this scythe enemy again use predator's claw scythe enemies always use predator's claw unless um, I advise not to because sometimes you don't just don't quite have time and it's best to just kill them as quick as you can and then get out of, get, get out of there grab that collection of memories Down here will be another scythe enemy, bottom of these steps. This one you've got time to use a claw. Predator's claw. There you go. Yeah, sometimes you have to do it a few times before it works. Like I say, it's, I think it's like a 30% chance. Because most of the time it does appear first time. Or, you know, normally it will appear within, within three attacks, it will normally appear. But sometimes I just do three or, three or five and then give up and just kill them normally. Yeah, sometimes they just don't want to drop it. Right, so kill all these. There's going to be more scythe enemies. I'm going to quickly kill. You kill all the other enemies if you want, but don't go near the um, the floating enemy. We we'll see soon. Looks like a sort of witch. Yeah, it's actually a. I think it's a blood sword enemy. Yeah, don't go near her just yet. We do not want to aggro her. But that mutated scythe enemy. He's got more chance to drop shards. Yeah, that guy with the spikes coming out of his back. Yeah, he's imitated version and he's got more chance of dropping them. So they're always good. Yeah, just kill the shield guys if you want to. I didn't, just because I'm trying to be a bit quicker. But it probably slowed me down actually. Yeah, see this side that side attack it actually heals you back up. So if you suck the scythe weapon from them, you can use it to heal. Right, once you've killed them, grab anything they drop and then quickly come around here guys and grab this collectible. Yeah, this is collectible number uh, 70 I think it is, Experienced Researcher's Notebook 01. Yeah, grab all these barrels. Yep, there's a few more side enemies, and you've got a collection of memories there. Yep, I, I avoid that. Um... That shield enemy, but you can kill him if you want to. That's it. By this point, with all them scythe enemies, you should have quite a lot of quite a lot of them um, scythe start shards at the moment. You should probably get that to like level uh, level three or four, hopefully. There's a trophy for maxing a plague weapon. This is the only one I max just because of its ability to heal you and damage enemies at the same time. It's really good actually. Once you upgrade it, you can actually use it twice in a row, so you've got two chances to heal if both attacks land. Yes, now you want to come into Plague Weapon, now we're at a beacon. Yeah, unlock, you want to unlock the Scythe re weapon, and you want to un upgrade it as much as you can. Yeah, hopefully you should be able to get to about level 3 or 4. That's you go, there you go, and you want to equip that guy, so that's going to be your key Plague Weapon now for the rest of the game. Like I say, when you need to heal, just use that with Square, and if it attacks enemies, it will heal you up as well. So it's basically like an infinite way to heal yourself, and it's got energy. And um, for the trophy for beating a boss without healing, um, you can actually use that, you just can't use the potion. And you've got a collectible there, guys. And that's number 71, Folk Potions Research Report 01. Grab that mint. Yeah, grab that mint and then quickly get back to the beacon. All you want there is the mint, guys. Don't mess, mess around. Just grab it and then go back to the beacon. Now we're going to do a glitch. We're ready to do a glitch now. So by this point, you should have Rosemary. Um, rosemary, Mint and Time. You want to use all your collection of memories. We're not going to level up. Just use them all to get loads of shards. 
Yeah, use as many collection of memories as you have. Yep, and then you want to come to um, potions. Yeah, so come into potions, you want to craft a potion. And what you want now is you want rosemary, mint, and thyme in each of the slots. And that will actually give you the focus recipe. You see the bottom left, it will say focus in a second. Yeah, there you go. You get a trophy, it's this alchemy, that's for making your first recipe. Yes, yeah, so you want focus. Remember, rosemary, thyme, and mint. Yep, and then all you're going to keep doing, you're going to kill yourself with bloodstained dagger. Then you're going to use that potion. What focus does is it makes it so while it's active, you got you're going to get extra. Sh you're going to get 25% extra shards while it's active. And the glitch is that it works on your um, death shadow. Strangely, yep, yeah, it's got to be a glitch. There's no way you should get extra shards for picking up your own sh your own shards. Yeah, so um, use the focus potion, grab your shadow, and then kill yourself again. That's all you're doing. Remember, that focus potion gives you 25% extra shards. And it works on your shards. That's why that's the glitch. So each time, each time you grab all your shards, you're getting 25% more. So you'll find we've only got, what, about 10,000 at the moment. That slowly creep up to like 400,000. But from level 13, all you need is 328,000. To be, pre to be precise, from level 13, you need 327,000. 602 in order to get to max level so just get 328,000 or more yeah 328,000 guys or more and it'll be good to go so just do that guys and I'll come back in about five minutes I'll just edit the rest of this out remember bloodstained dagger use focus potion grab them and then just repeat it yeah it's taken me about five minutes um but if you was unlucky enough guys and for some reason you don't have enough alchemy enhancers to get unlock that third ingredient slot you should have uh, you know where we got that mint a second ago well a few minutes ago now yeah you can actually kill that blood that um witch lady for an extra alchemy enhancer and also that qatar enemy for an extra alchemy enhancer but you should have enough okay so i've got 362,000. that's plenty we can level up to 50 now so you want to go into strength 20 plague 20 and then i've put vitality 12. So 20 strength, 20 plague, and then 12 in vitality. That unlock peak performance. And now to get our build going. So this is all I'm collecting, guys. You should have all these unlocked. You wanna if you want a full list of everything I'm upgrading, just look in my inventory menu. Uh, sorry, look in my text guide. If you can't quite keep up, or just slow this down so you can see exactly what I've got equipped and what I don't have. Basically, it's what we all had before, but we've also got um strategies, blessing, level one. Strategies, Blessing level 2, Strategies, First Aid, Saber, Healing Execution level 1, Saber, Healing Execution level 2, Saber, Sharp Weapons level 1, Saber, Sharp Weapons level 2, Saber, In-Air Attack, Saber, Energized Weapon level 1, Deflect, Energized Deflect level 1, Dodge, Quick Recovery level 1, Claw, Gliding Claw level 1, and yep, yeah, and then you want to go into your Long Lasting Potion, your potion menu guys and um, I think I forgot to do it here but you just want to put healing herbs now into your three slots there's no need to have the focus potion anymore so yeah just put healing healing herbs into your three ingredient slots and here's a collectible guys number 65 alchemy researchers notebook small bowels yeah it just it, I find it's more helpful having just as much healing as you can from your long lasting potion um, than anything else because you'll find the more your long lasting potion can heal the longer it lasts uh, which is really helpful. So yeah, now we're still killing scythe enemies unless unless you have your plague weapons maxed. If you wanted to, you could farm these enemies now if you wanted to. Just keep resting the beacon. Uh, but it's collectible there, guys. Number 60, Greenhouse Procurement Order. You've got another scythe enemy. I just kill him on the way. I think I kill him all the scythe enemies here and in subquest 1. And I don't think I kill anymore because that's pretty much always enough to get maxed. Scythe plane weapon, uh, plague weapon upgraded, but you'll do a lot more damage to enemies now. Now you've increased your attack and obviously your high level. Uh, you got a collectible here, guys. This is the Alchemy Researcher's Notebook 01, I believe it was. Yep, that is collectible 62, Introduction to Alchemy. 
Over here, you've got collectible 66, Alchemy Researcher's Notebook. And this guy here, don't kill him. All you want to do is use Predator's Claw to get his item. That's it. Just get one whip shard and get out. You only have to kill one of them in the game to actually progress the story. Well, not to progress the story, but to um, complete the sub sub quest world sub quest level. And um, you might not get enough from him if you're unlucky. So that one, I just grab his whip as we're making our way past him. Right, if you want to kill these enemies now, it's going to talk to an NPC in a second. Yeah, so any enemies following you, just get rid of them. That's it, then come up here and talk to Emerald. So with Emerald, you can find Emerald in each of the main stages for each map. So um, not a sub-quest, but the main ones. You find them in uh, Sea of Trees, Sea of Trees. Royal Garden and Hermes Fortress. And all you want to do is show item and show him all your law collectibles. Yeah, there's collectible here, guys. This is number two of... Sorry, that is number 69. Last page of Researcher's Journal. And you got a beacon here. Yeah, that collectible is just got... Sorry, yeah, it's collectible number 69. Last page of Researcher's Journal. Yeah, I just need to make sure I need to um, restock all my potions. Right, so, um, yeah, the Hand Queen. This boss isn't very difficult at all. Yes, remember, if you've got that Plague Weapon Scythe, you can use that to heal now. So you can use your potions occasionally. Uh, but I always try to use the Plague Weapon when I can. Yeah, but you can, it's quite, it's attacks are quite easy to parry. And without short claw level 2, once you build up 5 stacks of defensive buff, you start healing HP anyway. Not, it's not a lot, but it helps. And um, healing execution level 2, by the way. A lot of people don't know this, but um, level 2, it does actually increase how much you heal each time you execute an enemy. Or basically, you know, when you finish off an enemy. Yeah, it's because it doesn't actually say it in the description. It just says it increases... Get what it says it increases now, but it doesn't mention HP. But yeah, it actually doubles it doubles how much you gain when you kill an enemy. But yeah, he's quite easy this guy. If he jumps away, just keep dash, uh, dashing towards him and just keep applying the pressure, keep attacking him. Now you're level 50, he's not too difficult at all. With your plague weapon, as long as you've unlocked the extended action, you can actually just keep spamming the button and you'll and you do it twice to give you two chances of healing. Really helpful that. And with all the mobilities we've got now, you should regain all your energy really fast, just from normal attacks or deflects. Or even claws. will heal himself back up at times like so just keep applying the pressure guys and hopefully he won't heal up too much yeah a lot of times when he slams his hand down he will do like a two hit combo so to be ready to deflect the second hit you know when he moves his when he moves his hand away and again sometimes when he does that bite he'll bite you twice But when he's being sick, when he's vomiting up blood, you can just keep attacking him and he won't attack you. And until afterwards. There we go, finish him off. So it's random, he might drop a alchemy enhancer, he might not. But he'll always give you a forgotten feather, um, the hanged queen's core, and some bloodstorm, bloodstorm skill shards. All the bosses drop a different plague weapon. Yep, and then talk to Ace Me guys and head back to the hub. Yeah, so back in the hub, you'll now unlock the fast acting potion. You're gonna go and grab this lore collectible to begin with. Hermes answer the research notebook. Yeah, this appears after doing the Royal Garden. Go back to Ace Me, you now you want to show her item, you want to show her the Hanged Queen's Fused Core and the Hermes Answer Research Notebook. 
That will give you law collectible number 3 of 22 and 15 of 22. Yeah, now, we, now we're going to finish all Sea, sea of Troy Trees quests now, guys. Now, I've got our build. We're ready. Ready to go. So, Sea of Trees, sub-quest 1. We're going to do that next. So, the goal here, guys, sub-quest 1, is to um, destroy all assists to complete it. We're going to be, obviously, grabbing a load of collectibles as well along the way. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to smash his barrels in here. There is a fine dagger enemy, but we don't need to kill them anymore. So I'm just going to dash past there, get the barrels, and also get his collectible. Collectible number 23, Odus Vile Blood Research Notebook. What well, he's got then, move on to the next. She'll drop an alchemy enhancer if you kill her, but it's entirely up to you guys. Yes, yeah, so you've got another cyst here. Yeah, we're not. I'm not collecting any collections of memories no more. I mean, you saw one there. I only broke the barrel. Because we're max level, there's no nothing else to spend all your money on. So I'm not going to collect anymore. Just collectibles now. Uh, you got another cyst here to break. Then unlock the gate. Yeah, and if you're wondering why my why my um, shards say like one gazillion or something, yeah, so collectible here. And um, that is number 21, Legend of Four Thieves Vinegar 01. And you got a beacon here. Sorry, no it wasn't, it was collectible number 17, note from an unknown hopeless, 04. Yeah, get that assist, and this is one, number 21, Legend of Four Thieves Vinegar, 01. And around here you got a clove, this is the only fixed place to find a clove, so make sure you get that. Yeah, but for some reason, when you um, fill up your um, collectibles, your shards that way, it glitches them all up, that's why it's just like one gaz gazillion. Yeah, destroy that cyst, guys, and then get that collectible number 20. Note from an unknown hopeless, 05. Come over here, and here is a mutated hand axe enemy. So we're going to kill him. Remember, we're trying to get oregano from this guy. That's the only reason we're killing him now. Hopefully he drops a oregano. You might have it already. If so, you don't have to kill him. And you want collectible number 17, a manuscript of a helpless prophet. Then drop down, and behind you will be some more barrels you can break. I'm not going to always mention the barrels. I mean, you know by now, any barrels you see, just break them. Yep, here's a, another cyst, guys, and another mutated hand axe enemy we're going to kill. Hopefully get an oregano. I actually have to farm oregano at the end for about five minutes, so I was quite unlucky with the drops. Yeah, so kill him, get anything he drops, and get them barrels. Again, I'm not collecting collection of memories. Commerce ladder. And there'll be a collectible it will lead to. This will lead you to number 19. Collectible number 19, Whistleblower Records. Yeah, collection of memories, if you didn't know already, they are the white orbs. So if you see any white orbs, that's just a collection of a memory. You don't need to collect them, just a consumable. Green ones, as you can see, are main collectibles. Like that one, Whistleblower Records. And blue ones, it's a herb. So yeah, if you ever see any orbs on the floor, Blue ones, sorry, blue ones can be a, a shard as well. And here's the last cyst, guys. So there's a hammer elite if you want to kill him. No need to. Just going to get his barrels we, and get his last collectible around here, number 16. As a collectible number 16, note from an unknown hopeless, 03. That's it, come down here and talk to Ace Me Shadow to warp away, guys. Yeah, the goal here was to destroy all assists. So if you didn't, if you didn't complete that request, that recall, then it's because you missed one somewhere. But you should have got them all following me. So yeah, talk to Ace Me, that will warp you back here. We're gonna go to the next place now, Sea of Trees, the God of the Falls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so recall, Sea of Trees and God of the Falls. So this one, there's no need to kill anything. All you need to do really is get to the end and right at the end, you can instant kill the boss. We just have to get there. It's a bit of a gimmicky boss, you know, throughout the level, the boss will be, he's basically like a massive giant god. And then um, he'll just attack you at times when you're running along and poison you. And you can't attack him to get right to the end where you can instant kill him, like I said. You just have to get there first. So along the way, you want to destroy all these massive yellow cysts because they will poison you. And try not to stay on these outer catwalks for too long. Sorry, the inner catwalks. Because, yeah, sometimes he'll slam you with his hands, but other times he'll lob poison down. 
and it's not poison which builds you up it's poison which just damages you straight away and if you get caught in that you're probably likely going to die so yeah just be very careful when you're on the inner catwalks you don't stay on it for too long yeah here's a mutated hand axe enemy I'm going to kill him hoping for the oregano These guys only appear in Sea of Trees, and I think one of them appears in Hermes Fortress, the guy with farm. Yep, straight past there, gonna get that assist. Quickly. We're on the inner catwalk here, so just don't try not to stay up too long. Quickly destroy the assist and then get out. See he just spit poison everywhere then. Now around here, just smashing the barrels as we go. There are a few collectibles here, but not too many. So we're going to kill his mutated hand axe enemy. Hopefully he drops the Oregano. Again, if you've already got it, you don't need to bother killing him. This is just in case you don't have Oregano yet. So down here, and we're going to move into the next one. There's another guy, but we're going to lure him in here. Because there's a collectible here. This is number 29, Note from an Unknown Hopeless, 06. Now we're going to kill that mutated hand axe enemy from here. And I think he's the last one on this level, actually. Yeah, pretty sure he is. But I want to kill him. Back to the inner catwalk and destroy this next cyst. Yeah, that poison almost killed me. If it builds up the poison gauge, it'll start damaging you, but it'll damage you really quick. There's a fine dagger lady. An elite. If you kill her, you'll get an alchemy enhancer. I don't need any more, so... Um, it should be good. Right, I'm just going to wait for him to spit his poison. There you go, see him spitting his poison on the inner catwalk. I'm going to wait for it to dissipate and then we're going to sprint past quickly. Yeah, he's likely on that on this far corner, he almost always spits poison there. So it's best to bait it first and then sprint past straight after it's gone. Right, you've got a hammer elite there. And you want to quickly destroy this cyst. You have to come here just for a collectible all the way over here. Yeah, we'll just destroy the cyst. I'm just going to get the barrels and then go and get our collectible. This is number 27. Experience of a hopeless builder, O2. That's it. You might want to wait for him to spit his poison before you come down here. That's it. But once you get away from that inner catwalk, you're safe. And now we need to get up this ladder. Just be careful. Sometimes she'll lob knives and stun you and knock you down. Uh, but it, uh, most of the time, I get up there first time. As long as I make sure she's doing an attack first before I start climbing. Uh, so you've got another cyst here. I'm not sure. I don't think you have to kill all these cysts. I've just always destroyed them. And you've got... There, guys, is fennel. So in that barrel is a fennel. I think fennel's the only herb you can find twice. A fixed location. Right, so... um, When he spits poison along here, you can actually hide behind this wood, the fence. So you hide behind the fence. You run from one fence to the next. And when you're running across the holes, do not drop down the hole, of course, and walk across the thicker piece of wood. If you walk across the smaller, you'll just fall through. That's it when you're over here at the end, guys. You can instant kill him. Yeah, so don't try to run all the way along here at once. You will not do it quick enough and he'll kill you. You need to hide behind one fence, wait for him to do his attack, and run to the next. I learned that the hard way. And yeah, instant kill him, guys. He might drop a alchemy enhancer, he might not. Like I say it's a little bit random. There you go, and you get all that stuff from him. He'll drop the um, false God's Core, uh, false punch skill shards, and of course, like I could say, hopefully, alchemy enhancer and some maybe some sage and time. Right, so once you're back here, now we're going to go and beat Mutated Odor, Sea of Trees, level five, I think it is. Yeah, so this one's pretty much just a boss fight, and if you want to farm anything, this is a good spot to farm. Because this boss is literally right at the start. You just come in here, kill a boss. It will possibly drop. It can drop Alchemy Enhancer, Sage, Time. Yeah, obviously you get shards from him as well. It's a good place to farm. <laughs> just come here, kill him quickly, farm Alchemy Enhancer. Yeah, so if you ever get to the end and you're short on Alchemy on alchemy Enhancer to upgrade your potions. You just come and farm this guy to get some. Yep, so um, it shouldn't be too bad guys, level 50 with all our talents. 
This guy is actually quite difficult in two level pushes because um, he's only got one bar of health, but I think that one bar is pretty much just two bars squashed into one. Because you can see just how slow it takes to knock his to damage him. Yeah, but it's quite easy to kill, I find. A lot of time when he jumps back, by the way, though. Yeah, when he jumps back, you'll like swipe, swipe his tentacles. So um, just be ready to deflect that. Yeah, if Tommy, if Tommy jumps back, deflect as well, because you always just swipe his tentacles as he dives away. Most of the time, anyway. That attack is quite good to deflect because it does lots of damage to him. And yep, just keep punishing him, guys. Remember, you can use your um, scythe to heal if you need to. And you've got your long lasting potion as well. Critical attack. Remember, critical dodge towards him. And then, when you're in the air, you can press R1 to do a saber attack or R2 to do a claw attack. Obviously, if he's got no wounds active, then you don't want to do a claw attack. That's it. And when he does that, dodge to the left or to the right. That's it. If he hits you, as long as you've got full health, if he hits you with that ultimate attack, you should be able to um, survive it. Just best to avoid it if you can. Like I said, best thing is get out of range, but because we're too close to him, he might not get out of the range quick enough, so it's best to dodge to the left or to the right. Almost got him. He's not, he's just not too bad, is he? Level 50. And all, all these slight little sub-levels, um, they get less and less. So on the Sea of Trees, you've got five, there's five levels altogether. Um, Royal Garden, there's four altogether. And Hermes Fortress, there's three altogether. Yeah, I don't think I use a potion here, so I, I actually get my piece of cake trophy. Yeah, there we go, piece of cake. That's for defeating a boss without using a potion. You can still use a scythe to heal. Uh, but it's a really easy spot for that later, so don't worry if you don't have that now. There's a really easy boss later. We can get that. Right, it's going to show item. The God of the Falls Vile Core and Odus Fused Core. Going to show them to her, and then you'll get the collectibles 9 of 22. God of the Falls Vile Core, that's lore collectibles. And the 11 of 22, Odus Fused Core. And they're going to unlock some plague weapons. So you've got false punch. Uh, we've got mutated tentacles. We've got bloodstorm. And we're going to upgrade the long lasting potion. We're going to upgrade the amount of potions to level 2. And the health recovery to level 2 as well. Yep. And then we're going to go to Royal Garden sub quest 1. Yeah, when it comes to the actual lore collectibles. I know the normal collectible says 94. But the law collectibles, there's 22. Um, you find probably about, there's probably about five of them in the world that you find. And then the rest come from showing those law collectibles which you found and the um, the course to Ace and Me and showing exactly the same things to Emerald. Yeah, that's where the rest of them come. So you don't find too many of them in the world. And um, you get the rest from showing your boss, your boss items and them collectibles to ace me and like I say show the same ones to emerald and that gets you completely separate items so what's your spawn guys on royal garden sub quest sub quest one is it yeah first of all turn around and come over here and get collectible number 70, 72 a uh, folk potions research report 02 and over here is a lavender I think that's the only fixed lavender drop in the game Yes, once you've got that, now we can crack on. So um, go past straight past the beacon. Like I say, you don't need the white orbs. All they are are collection of memories. They give you 100 shards, and they're not needed for anything else, especially not if you're level 50. Shame there's not a shop to buy things. Like they could have made it so you could buy alchemy enhancer, you know, something like that. Okay, so um, we're coming straight to this corner, and you want to kill these guys because this enemy we're gonna, we have to kill in a minute for a key. Um, she's quite a nuisance if you've got all these guys trying to attack you at the same time. So we're going to attack, kill all these guys in the corner, out of the way of her, so you don't aggro her, the witch, uh, the blood blade, blood blade enemy. Uh, but what you want to do here, these shield guys, you want to make sure you use predator's claw first to pour an extra shard from them. 
That's it. Done one. I think I've done them both, actually. Have I done them both? I think so. But yeah, kill these. Remember, make sure you use PC, Predator's Claw, to um, pull a shard from, an extra shard from them to begin with. To finish them off. Right, there we go. Grab anything they dropped. Right, now we're going to kill this woman. Yeah, so it's this Bloodblade Elite. We kill this guy as well, otherwise he's going to wake up when we go to kill that witch. Yeah, Bloodblade enemy. Yeah, these guys are quite a pain in the ass, as you'll see. They did quite a lot of damage. And they have quite a long range as well. It doesn't look like it. They're slow, but they do quite a lot of damage. And their attacks... They're quite, they're quite weird to um, telegraph because they attack quite a lot differently to any other enemies you've encountered so far. But yeah, make sure you use PC on her first to um, get an extra item. The thing is they got loads of health as well because they're an elite enemy. These elite enemies, they must have like a boss health bar just, just compressed into like a little tiny thing like a normal enemy. But yeah, kill her guys, you'll get a key to the greenhouse, second floor, and you'll also find Agri Enhancer, and some Bloodblade skill shards. And also, look at that collectible guys, number 73, Alchemy Researcher's Notebook, 04. And you've got another collectible here guys, this is number 75, Giant Tree Experiment Records, 01. And you've got a beacon here. Yeah, so um, I start killing the Scythe enemies again. And after this, you should pretty much have enough to fully upgrade it. Yeah, so any side of enemies you come across, I don't kill them all, but I get most of them. So you've got this guy here. First, use PC on him to get an extra shard and then finish him off. Yeah, we've got another one here we can finish. Yeah, so once you've got that shard to drop, finish him off. Yep, and around the corner here, you've got another one. This is one of the mutated types, so he's got more chance to drop. Yeah, there's another Scythe enemy around the corner here, but be careful of this one because there's an elite enemy there and he might overwhelm you. So you might want to kill this one quickly um, with Sabre attacks. Yeah, and we've just got another collectible, guys. That's number 63, Novice Researcher's Letter of Complaint. Yeah, just be very careful here because you've got that elite enemy. You might just, maybe don't even kill this guy. Just grab a collectible and then get out. You can see I'm getting a little bit of trouble here. Almost. Yeah, but make way over here once you have that collectible. You're going to open this gate and then make way to the top. That's so you've got a collectible here, guys. That's the number 74 Vile Blood Experiment Reco um, Records 01. You've got another collectible here. This is number 77 Underground Shift Complaints. Yeah, then over here. We're going to kill a shield enemy in a second. Because um, he dropped something. But we want to pull a shield from him first, a shard. And grab that key to the library elevator on that table. Yeah, key to the library elevator. Do not forget to get that from that table just in the corner. Now we're going to kill his bow enemy. And we want to kill that shield enemy as well. But we want to try and pull an extra shard from him before we kill him. I've already pulled the one from the bow enemy. So finish him off. And now I'm just going to finish off the shield guy. Because I already pulled his shard. Yeah, this shield enemy, he drops a key. Um, he drops a key to a greenhouse elevator. That's the elevator we're about to use. This guy drops it. Just be careful, because that blood blade woman may have followed you down. Yep, I got very, very close to dying there. Look at my HP. 7 HP. Yep, you want to try fight that shield guy nearer the elevator, because if you come too far over here to the bookcases, that blood blade enemy shield sort of um, aggro to you. But if you're near the elevator, she seems to de-aggro. That's it, so once you killed him, you get a key to the elevator. You can come in here. 
Right, now we need to make our way all the way back near the start, guys. So you can rest at the beacon on your way past if you want to, just to recover everything. You probably noticed as well, that first aid ability. Yeah, I'm just, this is where I remembered I didn't upgrade them. I didn't assign all health herbs. Yeah, health herbs are just much better than having any recipe active. Especially with the long lasting potion anyway, just because it heals you over time, it makes the potion effect last for much longer. So yeah, long lasting potion is best just to have all healing herbs on it. Maybe not with the other potions, but yeah, this one it's just better to have life herbs. Yeah, so making our way back here now guys to the elevator we passed earlier. Now we've got the key to the library elevator. Yes, make your way up here. There is a collectible over there. You're probably thinking, if you if you played this already, you might think I've missed it. I've not. We drop down there literally soon, so I just get it then. Yeah, so now we're in the library, from the um, library elevator on the higher floor. Let's make our way along here. Right, you've got a collectible here, guys. This is number 79, Experienced Researcher's Notebook, 03. You've got another one here. Number 78, Experienced Researcher's Notebook, 02. Drop down, and you've got another one here. This is number 76, Pure Blood, Re um, Pure Blood Record Experiments, 01. I think I've got a back front. Yeah, Pure Blood Experiment Records, I think it should be. Yeah, now you want to kill this enemy. Yeah, you need to kill her because she drops a key, which we need. You also get another alchemy enhancer from her. I've just changed the name of that file in my guide. Yeah, this is the it's the actual it's a blood sword enemy, not blood blade. Yeah, that's the thing with these elite enemies. They got the health bars are so big. Yeah, see that long lasting potion is still healing me. Really good that potion is. Yeah, so the skill shard is called Blood Blade. But, um. Yeah, make sure you got that collectible near her as well, guys. Um, I think it's number 67. Um, Seat of Trees Researcher's Secret Letter and we also just got number 68 Alchemy Researcher's Letter of Complaint Yeah, it's going to be one more Scythe enemy we're going to kill and then we're all done guys pretty much Yeah, you, you grab Blood Blade Skill Shards from her but um, I think the actual Plague Weapon is called Blood Sword so I think there's some sort of translation error there Yeah, because normally the actual Skill Shard is the same name as the weapon but yeah, I think it's a bit wrong there. Yeah, open this gate, guys, and grab the uh, Hermes answer from the research. That's a law collectible. And the talk to Ace Me Shadow to finish that quest, guys. And you walk back to the hub area. So we're going to show Ace Me that new item, Hermes answer from the research. And that's actually law collectible number 13 of 22. And we're going to unlock some plague weapons and hopefully max out the scythe now. Yeah, so you've got a shield. Um, you can max out the scythe and get a trophy now as well. You should be able to max out. If not, it just means you're going to have to kill a few more scythe enemies along the way. I'm not going to be killing any more. But just bear in mind, if you do need more, just kill a few more scythe enemies. Yeah, I don't upgrade the great sword. You might want to. But yeah, blood swords. I think there's some sort of error there. Because the skill shards are called blood blades. Some sort of translation error. Because everything else, the shards are the same name as your actual weapon. But not with that one. Yeah, so um, long lasting potion. You can upgrade it a bit more if you can. I've actually upgraded amount of potions to level three. That's it. And next, guys, going into Royal Garden, the underground laboratory. Yeah, so like I say, if you still need some scythe shards, 
just kill some enemies you go past or use a PC attack to grab one from them but I'll leave that up to you guys obviously I'm not going to be killing it anymore two more little sub areas of the um, Royal Garden left to do and then we're pretty much on the last area Hermes Fortress yeah the boss on this area Sound of the Abyss, this is the one which is very easy to kill without using a potion. And we're going to be killing some bow enemies now, so I had to get the bow shards. Yeah, so you've got a collectible here guys, that's number 83. Experiment number 1, Observation Report, 03. Yeah, and up here, you want to, that bow enemy, you want to pull the shard from, it, from him and then kill him. Yeah, so pull the shard and then kill him, the bow shard. And you also want to grab that um, collectible there, number 80. Experiment number 1, observation report 01. We got 03 um, just beforehand. And there's 01. Right, carry on. And there's sage there, guys. You might want to pick up. Yeah, pick up that sage. And um, grab that collectible, collectible number 84, blood written letter 01. And you've got another beacon here. Yeah, so next you're going to come across one of them, you know them like fire enemies. They're not really fire enemies, they're, I call them whip enemies because they drop the whip shard. Yeah, I'm running past quite a lot of collection of memories by the way as well, don't need them. Yeah, that big guy, just use your charge attack once to pull this item, or a few times, shouldn't take much. There you go, pull this item from him, then loot it. That's it, then we're going to get the next collectible. Which is over here. This is number 85, collectible 85 guys, blood written letter 02. Then we've got one more just before the boss. Yeah, you have to be, to get the, um, to get the item from that whip enemy, you have to be very quick before all the other enemies that are following you get, uh, reach you. Otherwise, you're going to have to fend them off first. Yeah, another collectible there, that's collectible number 81. The Vile Blood Experiment Records, 02. Right, that's all the collectibles, guys, in this area. So now we're making our way down to beacon number 3. Ready for the boss. Yeah, so this boss, very easy to not use the potion. So if you don't have the piece of cake trophy yet, guys, this is the place to get it. I mean, you don't have to do it now. You can come back later if you want to and do it again. But this is the easiest boss to do it on. Yeah, so use this beacon. I don't know why this boss is so easy. Yeah, use that beacon and then drop down over here, guys, and that'll begin the boss fight. Yeah, so this is Sound of the Abyss. Yeah, so there's two alcoves where you can hide, and he can't damage you in them. You want to stay in the middle one. If you stay in the far one, at the end of the boss, at the end of the fight, he actually drops some debris down on it. We stay in this middle alcove, and when he lunges across like this, run up to him and quickly destroy his weak point. There's this attack where he can destroy this weak point, and then there will be another attack where he'll do like a he'll thrust into the ground in front of you. That one was like a swipe. The swipe you have to run across to the right, uh, but the thrust it will normally drop down in the middle of you. And if you don't seem to be doing it, like he isn't doing it for me, yeah. If you see that, avoid any big red circles. Yeah, any big red any big red circles that appear, dodge them. Yeah, pretty self-explanatory that one. Yeah, so um, he doesn't seem to be doing it, he keeps doing the slash. But what can happen, once you've destroyed a weak point, you can still damage it, and then it actually damages proper health bar then. Just breaking a weak, po a weak point just does like tons of health. Yeah, like deletes like a third of his health bar if you actually destroy a weak point. Yep, so what, what I ended up doing is going out into the middle just to bait him to do the thrust. Yes, yeah, so he keeps doing this attack, and you can't damage him during that. Again, just 
keep away from the red zones. I shouldn't have to explain that. <laughs> but yeah, he's not doing it, so I'm going to go into the middle. Not yet. He's doing the slash again. I guess I do it after this. But yeah, just go into the middle, guys, to bait his uh, thrust. Where he dives down in the middle, in front of you. Then you, connect, then you can get to a sweet point on the other side. On the other side of his neck. Yeah, but I actually try it now. Yeah, so you see him standing in the middle a bit. Try and bait it. Just get back to that other cove when he's about to attack. Yeah, here he comes. So when he does that, then you can get to his other weak point. You see it? And once you destroy the weak points, like I say, it does a massive chunk of health. Damages a massive chunk of their health bar. Like it's like about one third. Oh, he's doing the slash again. Shame you can't target him when he's um You know, when he's appears from the um, abyss ahead and just lob a feather at him. Yeah, you have to wait for him to attack you unfortunately and um give him like five minutes to recover. Yeah, so again, there it is, there comes the first. Right, let's go and finish off this weak point. He's got two health bars, but once you've deleted one health bar, he's pretty much dead. What he's going to do now, like I said about that far alcove, he drops all debris on it. So you need to make sure you're in this middle alcove. Yeah, once you deleted his first health bar, he'll drop all debris on that, on that far alcove and block it. So make sure you're on this middle one. And eventually, he'll appear on the left and you can finish him off. Yep, like so. That's it guys, nice easy way to get a piece of cake trophy. Hopefully you got Alchemy Enhancer. But you also get his core. And you might get a few herbs if you're lucky. And you'll get some blood shield. Vile blood shield shards. Right, so back here guys, um, what we're going to do now is show Ace Me, the Sand of the Abyss Vile Core. That will get you um, Law Collectible, number 15 of 22. You can unlock the Plague Weapon if you want, the Vile Blood Shield. Yeah, you probably notice all the boss, all the shards, all the, sorry, Plague Weapons that come from bosses, that along that bottom, that bottom row of the Plague Weapons window, yeah, all along the bottom row, that's all the Plague Weapons that come from boss shards. Yeah, so next one now is Underground and Labo Laboratory, um, Subquest 1. Find the way back to the Royal Garden. Yeah, so that's your first collectible here. Number 90, Message in Blood 03. Carry on up here. Yeah, grab that one. Collectible number 88, Vile Blood Experiment Records, oh oh. And very shortly guys we'll get to Beacon 02, Beacon number 2. Grab that collectible there. Yeah, it's number 86. Derivative Research 01. Ignore that bow enemy. Because you've got a probably got an elite enemy chasing you down. So just ignore him. Just grab the collectible, guys, and then come up here. I did try killing that bow enemy to begin with to get shards. But you just end up getting into trouble with that elite enemy chasing you down. Yeah, so this bow enemy, you can use your PC on him. And grab that collectible guys, number 89, experiment number 1, observation report 02. Yeah, use your PC on this bow guy, just to get his item. There you go. And um, grab that, and then move on. You can kill him if you want to. Uh, but you might just want to grab that and move on like me. That's it, come up here. Go 
Grab this herb. Yeah, that's a basil. Use your PC on this bow enemy, your predator's claw, to get his shard. That's it. By this point, you should have enough to um, unlock the bow. And then drop down here, guys, and get his collectible. Yeah, that's number 89, experiment number 1, observation report 02. And up here, get his final collectible off this level. This is number 87. Derivative Research 02. Right, we need to kill his enemy now, guys, to finish this recall. So first, you want to pull his item from him by using your charged claw, your predator's claw, you'll get a whip, and then finish him off. All you need to do is keep attacking him, and then he'll keep warping away and spawning somewhere else. Just be careful, because sometimes he might spawn straight into a critical attack. So watch out for that green aura when it's about to appear, that green light when it's about to appear, just in case he starts off with critical. If you come quick enough, you don't seem to do it. Um, I think it's when you've done it. Or well, it's random anyway. They they have they have their own gauge they have to build up which you can't see. Critical gauge. That's why you have some talents which can um, reset their critical gauge if you use it. But when you've got that step and jump ability, critical is nothing to worry about. It's a pretty much a free hit because you can just dodge uh, dodge towards him and you know jump in the air and do an attack. Yeah, so once you killed him, you'll get the alchemy announcer, you'll finish the recall, and you should get some whip shards, and maybe some herbs if you're lucky. And then come up here, guys, and talk to Ace Me to walk back to the hub. So that's the Royal Garden all complete, guys. Now onto the final one, Hermes Fortress. Yeah, so talk to her, talk to Ace Me, and go straight to Hermes Fortress, guys. Yeah, it's not many levels, is there? Three levels with just different variations of each level for each of the subquests. Yeah, so I'm going to unlock the plague weapon now. Bow and whip. Yeah, bow and whip. You should have enough now to unlock them. If you need more for whip, you can only find them from them big fire enemies in um, in the royal garden. And uh, the bow, you can, you'll actually find more bow enemies in in here. So if you still need some bows, you can find them from enemies here. Uh, just keep an eye on that guys we should be okay as long as you followed my you know follow what I did and you were using your PC on enemies along the way to get an extra shard per enemy okay so first collectible guys is up this ladder and this is number 43 the soldiers sachet yeah over here go left that hole up ahead, it just leads to a, um, it leads to an elite enemy and um, collection of memory, you don't need to go that way. Yeah, here, you've got number 32, Diary of a Knight's Mother, 01. Around here, kick down the shortcut ladder. That's it, make a way around here. Yeah, over here you have a garlic. Yeah, I think that's the only garlic you can find on the floor. The one I've come across anyway. Yeah, over here we're going to have collectible number 42. Pure blood injection records. Drop down here, I'm ignoring that collection of memories. More barrels to destroy. And another beacon. This is actually a level where we farm barrels, but we'll be doing it later at the end of the game. So just keep smashing barrels along the way, and hopefully you won't need many more, guys. Yeah, for me, because um, by the time I got to this Platinum Run 3, I was quite experienced, and I didn't have to retry much at all. So um, I this my farm in here for the barrel is probably the longest I've had to farm for. I had to farm for about ten minutes, so I don't think I actually got that many, just by playing normally. Yeah, so up here next, you're going to kick down that shortcut ladder. 
And you've got a collectible here. This is number 40. Notes on Hermit's Life. Fortress 01. Yep. Okay, and back down here, guys. That room we're just in, at the top there, If you, you can go around to the top of the tower there, and it leads you to an elite enemy that drops a key to open a gate. Uh, but you don't need to. It just gives you, like, a different... A different route to take, but the way we're going to take is going to lead there anyway. Right, so yeah, through here. Yeah, climb this ladder. Yeah, try not to get stunned by the weak cannon fodder there. Yeah, so up this ladder next. One good thing about this game is the combat is quite tight, isn't it? And there's not really too many glitches. It all the game runs pretty well. I mean, yeah, it probably just stutter a little bit. Uh, you got a collectible here, guys. That's number forty-one, Tales of Folk Potions I two. Grab that and then climb this ladder. Yeah, it stutters a little bit at times, you know, with um, lag and perhaps frame rates. But um, in terms of glitches and stuff, I think the game runs pretty well. Like I said, the combat's quite tight on it. Yes, yeah, so we're going to make our way all the way to the top now. It's going to lead us to another collectible. Yeah, so this is collectible number 54. Diary of an Unknown Knight, 01. And drop down here. Now we're going to make our way to Beacon 3. Beacon number 3 on Hermes Fortress. More barrels. See a barrel, break it. Oh, what's that? A barrel? Yeah, break it. Yeah, always break any barrels, you see. Yeah, this is where I farm. So this beacon here, because there's about 10 barrels, you normally rest. Break all 10 barrels, rest again. Break all 10 barrels, rest again. Yeah, this is where we're going to be farming later. Not yet, later. So unlock this shortcut gate. Yeah, then come over here and grab a snow around the corner. This is going to be collectible number 39, troop selection ceremony now this twin swords elite enemy we need to kill him because he drops a key i'm going to need the alchemy enhancer anyway for our potions later yeah just watch out for these guys they do massive combos yeah you think the combo's finished but it won't be trust me yeah so just keep powering in parrying them until you're sure they've stopped attacking Yep, should have dodged towards him. Yeah, try to um, use PC on this enemy as well to get an extra shard. Remember, Predator's Claw on him to get an extra shard. That's what I mean, these guys are just relentless. He did that massive combo then, and still did a critical attack at the end of it. And got him. Yeah, so like I say, he'll drop the um, key to Cathedral Path, which we need. There it is. And uh, get an Alchemy Enhancer from him as well. Smash the barrels, come in here. And then loot, open the gate on the right as well. This is pretty much where the other gate brings you to, if you take the other path. We took that one. Yeah, now climb this ladder. This path leads you to a lot of collection of memories, but all we want is the collectible down here. Yeah, this one here. This is number 35, a civil servant notebook, 01. Yeah, drop down and climb this ladder nearby. I hope it's not too difficult to follow me, so I know I'm moving quite fast through the game. I remember when I first played this, the environments were quite confusing to get around. Just like any Souls type game are quite difficult at first to navigate. Without a map. Yes, there's one collectible here and it's down this final path on the left. This one here. Yeah, this will be collectible number 44, Tales of Folk Potions 01. Right, almost ready for the boss guys off this level. 
we're actually going to be fighting Vaj. You know, remember Vaj or Vaj, whatever you want to call her, him, Vagina. Yeah, he's actually the boss of this level, and he's a tutorial boss. So if you want to practice him, you can do so here. Um, this is only really good for parrying him. If you want to try killing him the way I did, by evading his attacks, it's probably going to be quite difficult to learn here, because of the small arena. But the good thing is, you can retry really quickly, because the beacon is right near the boss fight arena. So you can try him, die, try him again really quickly. And um, not like a tutorial where you've got to run through the whole tutorial again. So yeah, if you haven't done that level guys, you might want to just, uh, sorry that trophy for killing Vaj in the tutorial, deleting his first health bar. You can do so here. Um, but we've got one more collectible to get. This is collectible number 33, a Diary of a Knight's Mother, 02. That's it, and go to beacon, this will be beacon number 4. Yep, so this is it, the beacon before the boss fight. So like I say, if you want to practice him, do so here guys. And once you're ready, just finish him off. Yeah, the arena is quite small. So you won't be able to um, outrun a lot of his attacks. But he's still, he's still got all the same abilities. He did say ultimate attack now though. Um, but he doesn't that he doesn't do in the tutorial. And I think he does criticals now as well. And you don't do criticals in the tutorial either. So yeah, but everything else is pretty much all the same. You see he's got two health bars here as well. But if he does his ultimate attack, just dodge to the left or to the right like normal. I think he just catch me with one of his ultimates. Yep, almost died there. And I did that. You see, I deleted my health bar then. Luckily, the, the first aid talent um, kept me going. Yeah, so I guess with this one as well, his first health bar, he doesn't do any criticals or ultimate attacks. I guess he saves all them for a second health bar. It's pretty much just the same as the tutorial one. Yeah, now comes his ultimate attacks, guys, and his criticals. There it goes. Just dodge to the left or to the right. I think he catches me here. Oh, no, he doesn't. Yeah, just quickly to the left or to the right as soon as you get control back. Because it just stun you when he roars. Um, but as long as you dodge straight after you recover, you should be able to evade it. There's actually only two bosses after beating this guy, remaining, and you've pretty much done it. What I'll be doing as well is the final boss of the game, you have to defeat him about five times. Um, there's about five ending trophies, but there's also a trophy for viewing every single ending. So you have to you have to have fought him all five times on the same tile. That's why you can't reload the save. Yeah, but I'll show you one time fighting the last boss, and then every other time I'll just sort of edit out the boss fight and show you what ending to pick afterwards. So you don't have to see me fight the same enemy about five times. There we go, another ultimate attack. Oh, I dodged it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember him catching me when I was recording this. Maybe it's on my other one, because I was actually, when I recorded this, I was actually playing it back to back on another on another account. What I like to, I, I do it a lot of times. I normally play on another account, do one part, and then come over to the account I'm going to record on, and then do it there. Basically just a bit of practice before I record it, just helps me to keep the um, strategies and paths nice and tight. Um, but yeah, once you killed him guys, uh, hopefully you'll get Alchemy and Enhancer, you get quite a few herbs if you're lucky, you'll get a Forgotten Feather, but his core, and you'll get Giant Sword Skill Shards, and then back in Philosopher's Hill, yeah, you get a trophy. Yeah, what happens now? So you're going to go straight into the final boss fight. You can actually go back if you want to. Yeah, once she warps you here, you can actually go back to a beacon and seize recall. And then it's sent back to the Philosopher's Hill. And then you can go back to Hermes Fortress, so quest one. Uh, but we'll just do it now. So I'm going to unlock the plague weapon, giant sword. Yep, giant sword. That's what we just got from him, from Vaj. And I'm also going to upgrade this to health recovery to level three. You should have enough shards now. 
Yeah, so health, recovery, level three. Yeah, so each time you fight Corvus, all you do, you talk to Ace Me and you walk to the Ocean of Memories. That will bring you here, and each time you do an ending, you need to come back here, and you need to kill him, and select a different ending. And then at the end of the ending, you can choose to, it'll choose if you want to tell the truth or not, something like that. And um, if you choose yes, all it does is it'll show the credits and put it back on the main menu. But then when you go back into the game, you spawn back in. Um, but if you spawn no, it'll put you straight back in Philosopher's Hill. So we're just going to keep choosing no when it comes to, um, is it the truth? We'll choose no all the time. But yeah, just got to beat him now, guys. As you can see, he's not too difficult. Just keep powering him like always. Um, spam parry. If you do want to use your plague weapon on him, do, as, do it as soon as he's finished an attack combo. Because what normally happen, if you let him do a combo, then you attack him a few times and then do the scythe. He, he, he almost always dodges away when you've done a few attacks. Yeah, so when you use a plague weapon, do it straight after he's finished an attack chain. Because otherwise he's likely going to dodge back. You'll see him. You'll see him each time he's done an attack, I'll attack him a few times and he'll dodge away. That almost always happens. He will alternate between plague weapons, he will. And um, if you if you reave him with um, PC with the charge claw, um, you will take the weapon from him that he's currently got equipped and he'll keep switching. I mean look, Halberd at the moment. So if I reave him now I'm gonna get the Halberd. Yeah, what you can do as well, if you need to heal, you can wait until you've knocked him down this first time, like so, then heal, and then execute him. Yeah, but his, pl his plague weapons are very easy to parry. It's when he does his saber attack combo or his claw combo and it gets a little bit tricky. But spamming to win always does a trick for me. If you do fail, you normally just a case of just keep just keep trying again and eventually you'll get through. Sometimes spamming it you not you will not parry as well if you just spam it because some, some of his attacks is like a little pause. I mean now he's using a scythe weapon. So if I reave him now, I'm gonna get scythe. Oh and Halberd again. Yeah, so sometimes if you if you seem that spamming parry ain't working, you might want to just press it and then just pause for a moment, then press it. Like so. And now he's using the hammer. I think that's a hammer. Yeah, critical attack. Surprise I reacted in time then. And pretty much got him, guys. Yep, so that's it, Corvus. Like I say, you got to beat this guy about five times. I'm not going to be showing you again. Next time we beat him, I'm just going to sort of edit it out and show the ending at the end. But yeah, what happened? You'll beat him. Yeah, you'll end up back here. And you. this is the important part. So depending on what core you pick, Depends what ending you're going to get. So for this first one, make sure you pick these. Pick False God's Cure and the Sound of the Abyss. So Full God's Cure. Why am I saying Cure? I mean Core. Yeah, Full God's Core and the Sound of the Abyss. Very important. Pick them two. Again, Full God's Core and Sound of the Abyss. That trigger this ending. On each ending, I'm going to let you see the storyboard sequence for each ending. So you know to make sure you've got exactly the same one. So that first cutscene is always the same. But the storyboard here... This is always determined by what ending you went for. So as long as you've got the same storyboard, you should get that same ending. And this is going to be the power of Vile Blood ending. Yeah, so once you press X after this, that's when the trophy should trigger. There you go, power of Vile Blood. And now you get asked if it's the truth, choose no. Yeah, choose no, guys. That's it. That will spawn you back here. You could choose yes on the very last one. Just keep choosing no, and once you've got all the trophies, then you can choose yes. Right, so we're going to show her Varg's Pure Core. You'll get Law Collectible number 19 of 22. And now we're going to do Hermes Fortress number Subquest 1. Yeah, Hermes Fortress Subquest 1. Not much to do now, guys. Pretty much, yeah, probably like 30 minutes left of the video. I mean, the video's 
the whole thing was like three hours and ten minutes but I need to cut out I've had to cut out the farming and um, you know when we we're farming the shards earlier in Royal Garden to get level 50 I need to cut out I'm gonna have to cut out the oregano farming I'm gonna have to cut out some of the um, barrel farming and the multiple fights with Corvus later yeah so here's your first collectible guys number 47 notes on Hermes life fortress 02 yeah this subquest one if you miss any tutorial collectibles they can all be found in the subquest they're all they are still here now on the map they're just not going green like just like that you know where that guy just shot the arrow up there that collectible there would be paper on the ground 02 but you should already have that from the tutorial so yeah if any tutorial collectibles you've you missed that you should find them here glowing green but if you want to know exactly just look in my text guide and you can more or less just tell where they are from looking in there okay so up here guys is the next collectible this is number 57 tales of folk potions 03 yeah there you go and then we'll get the next beacon beacon 2 well you're going to be killing a great sword elite enemy now you need to kill this guy because he drops a key yep yeah, and um, if you don't have enough great sword shards at the moment this will be where you get the final ones. I think I had one platinum run where after killing that first one in a um, sea of trees, I didn't have enough shards. So that's why I've left this plague weapon until now. So yeah, make sure you um, pull his shard from him to begin with, guys. And then finish him off. Yeah, his plague weapon works quite well for stunning enemies. The scythe is still better because it heals you at the same time. But yeah, it knocks him down. Yeah, critical attack. Oh, surprise! I got caught that one in time. Again. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit dodgy. It's a bit dodgy with the dodging. The dodging can be dodgy at times. Yeah, you'll you'll go to dodge towards him to um, jump over him when he just critical, but the um, locking on goes all weird and you just run past him. Oh, he got me then. I don't think circle was working. Like I say, sometimes when you're already doing an attack animation, the um, dodge button won't work. Again, I dodged past him. Dodgy dodging. And that's it. So execute him. Right, loot anything he drops. You see you've got that key to residential area. Okay, now we can't climb up this ladder. This is going to take us to collectible number 49, surveillance record. You're up here and in this room. There's a collection of memories as well, but we don't need that. When we have one gazillion shards, there's no need to pick up a item which gives you 100. Yeah, so surveillance record 49. Come over here, unlock this gate with a key. And then grab this one, guys. Collectible number 38, Hermes Local Announcement. Now, this collectible is very easy to miss because it looks like you can't enter this room. But yeah, you can actually enter that doorway by smashing the barrels. And in there is collectible number 45, Notes of an Unknown Resident, 01. Now, this mutated hand axe enemy, this is the guy we're going to farm for Oregano. Yeah, this is the guy. So, in a minute, I'm going to show you. But yeah, this guy, you're going to keep running back to this guy from the beacon. In the whole game, this is the one which is closest to a beacon here. So that's why I'm farming this particular one. Yeah, so once you kill him, come in here and rest at this beacon. Yeah, this is uh, beacon three. Right, and from here, guys, all we're going to keep doing, if you don't have Oregano, you're just going to keep running around there and killing that mutated hand axe guy. What you're going to do, I'm just checking to, just to make sure. Yeah, Oregano. All you're going to do, you're going to run out, you're going to kill him, and they're going to use Bloodstained Dagger to spawn back here. And then run back to him, kill him, grab your shards, Bloodstained Dagger, and repeat. Remember, what you want is Oregano. I'll just show you a few times. So out here, kill him. No need to use your PC on him, no need. Because if you do that, he's only going to drop a shard, and we want the Oregano. So yeah, just keep killing him. That's it again, Bloodstained Dagger. Kill yourself. You'll spawn back at the beacon. And then head back outside. Back around the corner, guys, on the left. And do him again. 
Yeah, all right, so I'm just gonna edit this out and uh, when I come back, I'll let you know just how long it took me. I don't think it took me long. It's like five to 10 minutes. Yeah, so this is where it pops me. I, it took me about eight minutes total, but because it's my lab herb as well, I also get the herb gatherer trophy. And don't worry, because there's, there's still a few more herbs we need to get which have a fixed location. Yeah, so oh, we go, I know. And once you've got all the herbs, guys, you'll get that trophy herb gatherer. You also need all the herbs for some other trophies as well. But like I say, don't worry if you didn't get that yet. There's a few more we need to get, uh, which are fixed locations. You just might have them already if you're lucky. Uh, so over here, guys, it's a black pepper. Yeah, it's a black pepper. And I think the last one is going to be cinnamon, which we find. Uh, but you might have it already if you're lucky. Yeah, so grab a black pepper. Come up here, guys. And grab collect one number 48. Diary of an unknown resident. Yeah, careful, he might, that big guy might be blocking the doorway. I know, this is pretty stupid, really. I don't think I thought of that. Yeah, so over here next. I'm gonna find another collectible. This is number 46, Royal Family Rumors. And over here, now I kill this enemy. You don't have to kill her for anything, except for the shards. We need her shards to upgrade her plague weapon. This is a Qatar enemy. This is another annoying enemy which can attack you very fast. And it can look like her chain is completed, but it's not. So be very careful. Uh, but make sure you um, pull a item from her to begin with by using your charged claw. Pull in a Qatar shard and then finish her off. Yeah, we only have to kill one of these, luckily. Yeah, but then after this, pretty much you're pretty much the boss, guys. Yeah, Erd. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, once you killed them, um, um, Edwina, Scissorhands. Yeah, grab everything she drops. You'll get Alchemy Enhancer. You'll get some Katar skill shards, and now you should have enough Katars to upgrade that, um, unlock that plague weapon. Over here guys will be your final beacon before the boss. This should be beacon number, I think it's beacon, is it beacon number four already? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, beacon number four. Right, so rest there guys. Yeah, so this is Erd. I think a lot of people find this quite difficult. Her attacks on her second health bar, she attacks a long time and um, the parry, it can seem like it don't work that well with her, but it, it does. Just sometimes her attacks are better to dodge, uh, sorry, better to parry if you pause a moment before you parry again. You know, parry, parry, parry like so. Um, but if you want to be safe, just keep spamming it. And just make sure you're watching your, your health, using your plague weapon to heal if you need to, and um, of course, use your potions. If you want to use potions, use them straight after an attack, same with your plague weapon. Because similar to Corvus, um, after she's finished an attack chain, she does sort of dodge away. Yeah. If you want to use the potion, use it straight away. But if you want to use your plague weapon, dodge towards her straight after an attack and then use it. Yeah, she always dodges away straight after finishing off an attack. So your plague weapon will already miss. If she jumps up in the air, that's quite easy to parry. Just spam parry and you'll normally always block that. And you see her sword, which she leaves in the ground. Not her swords, but a sort of beam she's left there. Occasionally, when she jumps in the air and rams her sword down, they all sort of make a blast of circular energy. Just stay away from the circular area. Yeah, like so. And her ultimate's quite easy to dodge. Her ultimate, she doesn't actually dodge towards you. She just does like a massive circular blast. And again, you dodge that just by escaping from the circular area. This is actually his final boss, because Corvus, I mean, Corvus is technically a final boss, but you've already beat him a few times. Uh, yeah, but this is the final, the last new boss you're going to find. So yeah, ultimate, just get out, out of the um, area, and you'll obey that quite easy. Yeah, now her attacks get much quicker, and she'll keep pausing between them. you see, she'll do a few, then pause, then a few, then pause. So just watch your parrying. And if you do want to use a potion here, Try to use a potion, don't wait until your health is almost dead. Uh, almost gone, sorry. 
Yeah, don't wait until your health is almost disappeared. Try to use long rest and potion beforehand. And then you'll keep you'll keep healing and any damage you just to you while the potion is active. Even if your health is full, as long as the potion is still active, she'll damage you, then you'll heal her back. You'll be full, she'll damage you, you'll heal her back. Yeah, a, chain, a chain's gone for a long time. That jump and claw attack does quite a lot of damage though to a win. Pressing R2 when you're in the air after dodging a critical. I think this might be the one I've got very, very close to dying. I still got my first aid active, you can see a little first aid icon in the bottom left corner. Yeah, stay still, bloody hell. And got her, guys. That's yes, yeah, so that's heard. Hopefully, got an alchemy and answer for beating her. And um, you get her core, you get forgotten feather, and um, javelin sword skill shards. And if you look at it, you'll get some herbs. There's one more area to do, guys, and we're pretty much done. Just got to clear and clear, clean up a few trophies like the barrels. Yeah, right. Once you're back here, show her the pure herbs core. You'll get um. Collectible, law collectible number 21 of 22. And you can actually unlock the Qatar Plague Weapon now, unlock the Great Sword, and also unlock the Javelin Sword. I don't unlock Twin Swords yet because that's another one which you might not have enough shards if you've been unlucky. So yeah, I don't do Twin Swords yet, I leave it up till later. But once you've unlocked your final Plague Weapon, you'll get a trophy. Yeah, I'm going to leave that until later just because if you're a bit unlucky, you might not have it. And they're going to unlock Long Lesson Potion. We're going to unlock Amount of Potions Level 4. Yep, all we need now, I've got one Alchemy Enhancer remaining. All I need now is two more Alchemy Enhancers. Like I say, if you get to the end and you need more Alchemy Enhancer, you can you can farm Mutated Ord in Sea of Trees Level 5. Or you can just run any level and keep killing the, um, the Elites in the level. I mean, this one we're in now, Hermes Fortress Subquest 2. There's quite a few elites here which I avoid. So if you don't quite have as many alchemy enhancers as me, you might want to just kill a few more here than what I do. It's up to you. Just get some extra alchemy enhancers. Right, so yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so come here to begin with. That's a bow enemy I kill it just because if you don't, he's going to keep knocking you down the ladder. Not his first one, but a second one. Yeah, when you're climbing the ladder, he's got like a clean line of sight and he'll keep shooting you and knocking you down. And you do not want to fall. You do not want to fall on your back with an arrow stuck in your ass. It could be rather painful. Yeah, kill this one. It'll be, if you don't, he's going to shoot you from behind while you climb this ladder. Yeah, now climb this ladder. Yeah, then we're going to come up here. Now up here is a elite. Yeah, this is a halberd elite. So if you want an extra alchemy enhancer, you can kill this guy if you want. I'm going to leave him. But yeah, if you want an extra enhancer, kill this guy. But what we want to do is drop down here behind him and grab this collectible number 36 Civil Servant Notebook 02. Yeah, then we're going to drop down here, drop down again, drop down again. We're going to unlock the shortcut gate. And we're going to kill this Twin Swords enemy. Oh, I forgot, this, this enemy actually killed me. And he's a, this enemy is a pain in the ass. Yeah, you might want to kill any enemies following you before you come over here. 
yeah, this enemy, because you've got all the other enemies trying to kill you at the same time. And yeah, like I say, he did kill me. So um, I'm just going to edit it out, guys, to when I beat him. He only killed me once, don't worry. It only happened the one time. Because it unlocked that shortcut gate, it allowed us to come back here really quickly. But yeah, I just used the PC on him to make him drop a shard. Right, so quick edit, guys. Alright, I'm back, guys. Yeah, so he's got some of the HP. Yeah, it seems... When you come back here from the save point as well, if you take if you take a tight path, you know, stick to the left walls, the the other enemies don't seem to they don't seem to be aggro towards you as well. I mean I've not I've not practiced a bit loads of times, I mean it's quite simple to do. Yeah, you just gotta be careful for all the enemies chasing you down. The thing is you have to kill this guy because he drops a key that you need to get to a collectible. And I think to progress as well. But yeah, you kill him, you get a key to the plaza, and you also get an alchemy enhancer, of course, and um, some twin sword skill shards. You can unlock that shortcut gate. Yep, and then climb this ladder. Yep. And we're going to come up here to the top because there's going to be collectible at the top. This will be collectible number 55, Diary of an Unknown Knight, 02. Get some health back. Yeah, right. Drop down here next, guys. And uh, make a way over here. Drop down here and come along here. I'm taking you to the cinnamon now. This is the only place in the game you're going to find a cinnamon, a fixed location. I think I, I, I obviously have them all already. That's why I popped that trophy earlier when I got the origano. But yeah, if you're still missing cinnamon, this will be where you'll find it. And if you don't already have it, this is where you'll pop the trophy, Herb Gatherer. I've shown you where all the herbs are and the two we had to farm, uh, we did. That's Rosemary and Origano. So let's say elite enemy there, guys. Yes, here it is, guys, the cinnamon. Like I say, that might be your last herb, or you might have them all already. But yeah, that guitar enemy will drop a um, alchemy enhancer if you want one. I just hate that enemy, so it's um, a nuisance to fight. But yeah, drop back down, come back along here. Up this ladder. And then you kick down the shortcut ladder, guys. And then grab his collectible. That's number 34, Diary of a Knight's Mother, 03. At this point, you should have 93 of 94 collectibles. There's one more to get. That's just the normal ones. Rest of this beacon, that's beacon 02. Uh, sorry, beacon number 2 here. Right, you got to kill this guy to finish this recall. And once you kill him, it makes the final collectible appear as well. Yeah, so he's a great sword enemy. You get alchemy enhancer as well from beating him. Yes, this final collectible we're going to get is collectible number 56, Marshalling Order for the Knights of Pure Blood. I've put Pure Blood. I need to um, create that in my text guide. Good thing about, you know, using my text guide as I'm walking through this is it allows me to see any um, spelling mistakes or basically just make, make sure everything makes sense and I've not labelled anything incorrectly. Yeah, you'll get a trophy as well. Memory Weaver. If you don't get a trophy here, Memory Weaver, after you get his final collectible, then it's because you've missed one somewhere. If you have, then just look in my text guide and you can track down. All you all you need to do is count your the missing ones you're missing. Just count what number they are. And then look for that number in my text guide and you can tell where it is. Okay, so look at him afterwards, grab that final collectible. There it is, Memory Weaver. Like I say, that's collectible number 56, Marshall in order for the Knights of Pure Blood. That's it. And then go back to Philosopher's Hill, guys. Yep, you should get that trophy, guys. Completed memory, that's for completing every level. So once completed every level, that will pop. And we're going to rest. Um, we're going to unlock the final plague weapon, Twin Swords. You'll get Lord of Plague, that's for unlocking every weapon. We're going to fully upgrade the potion now. That's it, that get another trophy. Alchemist, fully upgraded potion. Yeah, if there's any shards you're missing, you look at my text guide, just look through there and you, you should be able to see where you can find each shard on there. Yeah, so we're going to go into Hermes Fortress, the first level. 
that's going to be where we're going to farm the barrels and we're going to talk to emeralds. Like I say, emerald will appear in the first level of each region. Um, but I just decided to do it here because here is a good place for the barrel farming as well. So get his barrels and you can climb the shortcut ladder, which we kicked down earlier. Yeah, if this ladder isn't here, it's because you didn't kick it down earlier. And if it's not, then just take the other ladder and just make your way norm make your way around it normally, guys. Don't take too long. Just shaves off probably like a minute. But yeah, I decided to go for Emerald Deer because we do the barrel farming. Like I say, you'll be you'll rest at beacon. And then you'll smash 10 barrels, rest again, smash 10 barrels, rest again. You probably smash 10 the cycle time with the resting and smashing the barrels. Probably about I don't know, maybe a 10 second cycle time, maybe 15 at max. Yes, yeah, so you're looking at about 10, 10 barrels every 15 seconds, maybe. Yeah, but what we're going to do, we'll get the beacon. Yeah, we'll get the beacon and then we'll go back and we'll do the barrel farming. Yes, yeah, so this is a beacon. Come through that shortcut gate. Yeah, this is the beacon you want to go to. And these are the 10 barrels we're going to break. So you're going to break them all now, but now we're going to go to Emerald first. Yeah, so Emerald, come up this ladder, and then go up this next ladder straight after. Now talk to Emerald and you want to show her every single item. And once you're showing her all these items, um, that should pop the trophy for collecting all the laws. Yeah, so basically all the ones you've showed to Ace Me, you need to show to Emerald as well, and that gives you all different ones. There you go guys, good listener. And now for some barrel farming. So what we're going to do guys is keep doing this now until you've got the trophy rolling required ahead. That's for breaking 1,000 barrels. Yeah, that took me about 12 minutes. I don't think I broke many at all, just from natural play. Yeah, I had to farm this for about 12 minutes. And there we go guys, rolling required ahead. So once you popped it, go back to the beacon. And um, collect, um, collect, select cease recall to go back to the hub area. Right, so once here, now we're going to do all the potion recipes to get the potion trophy. And also that should be the great collector trophy as well, fulfilling all the entries in the collection. Yeah, so for this list of all recipes, just check my text guide. Um, I'll put in description as well, I guess. So you've got pain relief, or just listen to what I'm telling you now. So we've already done focus, which was um, rosemary, thyme and mint. You've got pain relief, which is rosemary, clove and lavender. You've got fenno oregano and clove, which is circulation. You've got refreshing, which is fennel, oregano and mint. You've got warming up, which is black pepper, garlic and basil. You've got sweating, which is mint, black pepper and cinnamon. You've got courage, which is mint, lavender and black pepper. And you've got four thieves vinegar, which is rosemary, sage and thyme. So there should be eight altogether, if you include include focus and if you look in your um, inventory and in your collections you should see all the recipes in there which you've already done so if you if you're missing the trophy you just look in there and see what one you're missing and um, but you see what i've done and i've just explained to you in the commentary and like i say as well you can look in my text guide and find the list in there near the end of the guide but yeah once you've done them all 
you get play doctor, collect all potion recipes, like I say, the great collector, that's for collecting all entries in the collection. But for great collector, you need all the recipes, you need all the law collectibles, you need all the normal collectibles, um, you need all the herbs, and I think that's all you need for that, yeah. Yep, there we go. So all we've got to do now, guys, is do all the endings. So what we're going to do, we're going to cease recall. Uh, sorry, no, we don't need to because we're already in the um, hub area. Yeah, so I'm just going to put all all the best healing items, health recovery items, in my slots, just to give my long lasting potion. Make it'll make it last longer and heal heal me for longer as well. Yes, there you go. No, I don't want I don't want time in there. Yeah, so no, it's normally Sage which gives you the best bonus. Sage is usually the, the best. And the great thing about Long Lasting Potion, it gives you, it makes each health item 50% better. That's at that 150% in brackets. I think that's like exclusive to Long Lasting Potion. Yeah, right. So um, you're going to go to Ace Me, guys. And you're going to go to Ocean of Memories. And you're going to keep doing this now. I'm going to do all five trophies. Like I say, you can't safe scum list or safe backup because you need you need all endings on one save file for a trophy for collecting all endings at the end so what i'm going to do i'm going to edit out the boss fight on each lease show you my selection for the ending and show you how to pop the ending one ending is a bit tricky to do and just because um all the guys online tell you not to press a button but it's best just to press a ps button because then there'll be no inputs um actually done in within the game because you're on the PS menu no inputs can work yeah so beat him again and then we'll pick the ending here we go I've about got him yeah what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna completely skip the fight and I'm just gonna go when I edit this I'm gonna go straight to the ending show the trophy straight to the ending selection show the trophy straight to the ending selection so yeah but yeah so this will be a second time we beat him and what you're gonna pick now guys is um you're gonna pick once you're back in the hub area you're gonna pick mutated odor and Erda. Yeah, Oda and Erda. Yeah, so that's Oda with an O and Erda with a U. Don't mix uh, mix up Oda with Uda. So mutated Oda. That's the third one, and then Erda, the bottom one. So mutated Oda and Erda's core. And then come over here, interact with the green orb, and that gives the chaotic power ending. Again, I'm just going to show you the full storyboard, guys, and just so you confirm, you've got the same one. And um, we can skip this first cutscene. There you go. So yeah, I let storyboard play out. Yeah, so this is the chaotic power ending. And as soon as this trophy is popped, I'm gonna edit straight to the next selection. So again, you just have to go back to the ocean of memories, beat Corvus again, and get to the next selection. And um, when you get asked if this is this the truth, choose no. So it spawns you straight back in the hub area. Yeah, chaotic power. Is this the truth? No, it's absolutely not. Yeah, so back in the hub area, guys. And beat Corvus again. So here we go. So this will be another ending. So this one will be Erd and Varg. That's Erd with a U. U-R-D. So Erd's core at the bottom. And Varg's core at the bottom. There you go. Yeah, choose them two. Erd and Varg. And then go over to the green orb. And that would be the Blessing of Pure Blood Trophy. So again, I'm just going to show you the storyboard. Make sure you got the same, so you get the same trophy. Just so you know, if, if you've seen the same storyboard and the trophy don't pop, then it may have glitched. You might have to do it again. Well, I don't think that will happen anyway. I've not read anything about glitches, but um, you never know. But yeah, after the storyboard and you've got the trophy, Blessing of Pure Blood. Is this the truth? Choose no. And then again... Ocean of Memories, beat up Corvus. There's only two more endings to do after this one. Yeah, I think five five endings all together. We did one earlier, much earlier. And um, we're doing four now. Yeah, so do this one, and then there's two more remaining. Right, that's the last bit of that storyboard, so skip. Blessing of Pure Blood, nope. Right, and edit to the next ending, guys. Okay, so for this ending, this is going to be Mutated Odor and the Hanged Queen. Mutated Odor and the Hanged Queen. Now, this is very, very important. We're doing the Harmonized Force. So for this one, as soon as you've interacted with the green orb, press the PS button to open the PS menu. 
you might want to bring up the overlay like that so you can still see the game in motion. Yeah, you need to bring up the overlay, very important, as we don't want any button inputs to be registered in game. I know this bit's weird, but these particular selections, Mutated Oda and the Hanged Queen, they can both lead to two, two different trophies. And one of them, it seems that if you press any button, or even if you don't touch a controller, it triggers, it always triggers the um, power of cleansing ending. I don't know if it's um, drift on your stick which causes it, I don't know, or maybe you have to hold a certain button, I'm not sure, but if you bring up the overlay, PS menu, so basically no button inputs are registered in game. If you can't bring up this overlay, just bring up the menu, the PS menu, and leave it there for about however long it takes me to get to storyboard, about two minutes, and it can come back in. Once you've got to storyboard, this is where you want to get to. And if you're having trouble, just watch the next ending and you'll see exactly what happens if a input is registered. Um, but this is one you want to, this is one people have trouble with. But if you bring up the PS menu guys, it will cancel any inputs being registered and it should easily pop this. Yeah, so you watch that storyboard. This will pop the harmonized force ending. There's only one more to do. So again, is this the truth? Choose no. There you go. Harmonized force. Yeah, choose no. That's it. I'm going to edit until the last one, guys. This is it. About to pop platinum. So you're going to pick the same ones again. Mutated odor and the hanged queen. Now, for this one, I mean, guides are saying to hold it up. But it just seems any pressing any buttons, just leave the game on. Uh, what I mean is do not open the PS menu. Just leave the game in motion so your inputs are registered in game. And just keep holding forward on the analog stick. I'm not sure that's what it is, but that seems to be a consensus at the moment. I was tempted to um, make a backup save just before this ending and keep trying everything, but in the end, I mean, it, it all seems to always work. I don't think I really need to find out exactly what button you have to hold. Just holding up seems to do the trick, or not even pressing anything, just having the, just watching the cutscene. You'll see what will happen. He'll start walking forward at the end of this bit. And then, you'll see in a second, watch him. See, you see him, he started walking forward. And here's the second cutscene. So we picked the same combination on the previous ending, but we didn't get the second cutscene where he stabs himself. And it's similar with triggering this cutscene. It, it puts you into a completely different ending. And um, for some reason, if you have a PS menu open, so no inputs are registered, it that cutscene doesn't happen. And so yeah, it leads you to this last trophy, guys. This will be the plower, uh, plower, the power of cleansing. And um, with that, once you've seen all the endings, you should get the trophy Memory Seeker. And that's for reaching all the endings. And then you'll get Platinum, guys, Timesia, complete all trophies. Platinum. So it's taken me, I mean, my actual final run time was three hours, three minutes. I'll show you my actual in-game time afterwards. Uh, I know the video is only two and a half hours long. It's because I edited out all the bits of farming and such. And I died twice, I think. Um, but yeah, that's a platinum, guys, in time easy. Like I say, any problems, just look at my text guide and you can check everything in there if you're worried about anything. But yeah, there we go, another platinum. I'll just show you my end of run time at the end of the game. Yeah, my PSM profile's time. It's not, it's not three hours. I mean... But there you go guys, 3 hours, 3 minutes and 50 seconds. It's because um, I was doing this back to back with another account, I've not quite memorised everything. But yeah, you can do this really quickly if you want to. But yeah, thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you on the next one.